Did I attack my own fans? The answer is no, I didn't. Obviously, you're watching this. You're a fan. I never attacked you. Get the f out, Scrotes McGoat. You can cancel right now and see you later. Bye bye. Don't let the door hit your ass on the way out. I will never apologize to you, mob. I don't care where you come from, left or right. You'll never get an apology out of me for anything. Screw yourselves. I'm, I'm done with it. I'm completely done with it. Cancel your subscriptions at TimCast.com if this is what you want. I never wanted your money in the first place. Tim Pool attacks his fans. Literally didn't do it. Screw yourselves. I get people like Jeremy Hambly getting booked for my show, and then instead of coming on my show, he goes on, on some other show and then insults me. Then he goes on his platform and attacks me and tells, all of, and, tells, and tells everybody that I insulted them, called them bots, and it's just not true. But the reality is most of the people spamming us, they're not real people. But the personal stuff is, it, it's, it's, in, it's like TMZ garbage. It's like National Enquirer. I mean, if you like it. I don't care if people care about this stuff. They're allowed to. So if like you're interested in interpersonal drama and e-girl celebrity stuff, Timcast is not the channel for you. And if that's the case, and then I don't want your money. Tim Pool attacks his fans. Literally didn't do it. And it's just not true. <laughs> oh, gosh. Welcome back to The Watch. And if you're unaware, there is a bit of a controversy happening online between Tim Pool and The Quartering and a few other YouTubers, but uh, the uh, most prominent uh, people in it uh, are Tim Pool and The Quartering. The interesting thing about this is that it's actually a little bit to the side of the actual issue that sparked this whole con controversy. Uh, and what that is, is that there was an individual online, uh, there is an individual online named Eliza Blue, who is an advocate for, uh, you know, people that are victims of sex trafficking. And certain questions were uh, put forward about her authenticity. There's some very... Uh, uh, reveal when I say revealing, <laughs> it's revealing for the personality side of things, but it's also revealing in the uh, skin side of things. Uh, videos of Eliza that didn't seem to uh, coincide with someone who perhaps was a victim of sex trafficking, and there were questions raised about this specifically by uh, Brittany Venti. And the more people have actually looked into Eliza, the more questions have come up where there is some like legitimate questions about her authenticity. Uh, regarding all this, and she said some very concerning things about um, children and consent and other things. Uh, but to begin with, it was just uh, simple questions. Uh, it's evolved, and now there's actual legitimate, you know, concerns that is she truly uh, a victim of sex trafficking, or is she using victimhood as a means to grift? And look, when they've looked into the past, there's been legit, like, there's enough you know, stuff there to have legitimate questions about her authenticity, especially about the timeline. Why hasn't she named the uh, perpetrators? Uh, because you'd think naming them would help prevent these evil people from trafficking other impressionable young women. And she hasn't. And the reason she's claimed don't don't ring very true. What happened to Brittany in uh, reporting this is that um, Eliza reported her and Brittany got her entire Twitter account banned because it seems like Eliza has some connections with Twitter, uh, Twitter trust and safety. And so this is some of the background, right? And this kicked off uh, a significant talk about current censorship on Twitter. This was not a good thing. Brittany did not deserve to get banned. And the reasons Twitter gave that she was spreading uh, um, uh, I, I guess pornographic or nude images about people without consent, even though the image that she posted of um, uh, Eliza was on YouTube, it was public and it wasn't actual nudity, it was revealing, but it wasn't nudity. And so the reasons that Twitter gave were it was just that were wrong. They were flat out wrong and she didn't deserve to get her Twitter account banned. And so already this is very significant in regards to the current culture war about how free people are to... Uh, talk about stuff on Twitter and potentially expose frauds. And if Eliza, you know, is innocent, 
you know, it, it, like especially for something as significant as a, as this type of topic, you would want the person to be sincere. There's been so many. Uh, really disingenuous grifters that we've seen in the past, people claiming to be disabled, claiming to be victims, claiming to things, when it's completely false, completely false. So people are very justified in having their, uh, I guess, um, caution up about potential future grifters. And when I, there've been heaps of people, people who are like, you know, said that they were raped and they would not. That was flat out, it was false, and they ruined people's lives by, you know, these false claims. And so, yes, perfectly justified in uh, having skepticism and asking for some receipts. And you don't have to go into detail and, you know, relieving trauma and stuff. But the thing is, though, if you are using that, tra so, you know, supposed trauma to uh, essentially profit, okay, and, she, and Eliza Blue has done that. She has claimed super chat donations and everything because she's a, a trafficking victim, even though a definition of tra trafficking is very dubious, where she basically gave the de definition of catfishing uh, and not actual trafficking. So again, questions, yeah, was she actually trafficked? So legitimate actual questions and, the, and to expose frauds is a good thing, hence the reason why it's become a, a significant topic. Tim Poole falls into this regard because he has had Eliza Blue on his you know, channel, Tim Cast, twice and interviewed her. That does give an air of legitimacy, okay? And so there is a perception that Tim has actually helped prop Eliza up. And if Eliza is committing fraud, Tim has inadvertently, not his fault, you know, if he, if he didn't, you know, how much, I guess, culpability is on interviewers to dig into everyone's past. I don't expect them to do like a full on background check or anything. Sometimes you do take people at their word and uh, Tim seems to have taken Eliza at her word, but inadvertently, if she is committing fraud, he has helped promote a fraudster, uh, rip people off. This isn't the first time something like this has happened. It's happened with a guy named Jack Murphy, who uh, was trying to spread positive, uh, you know, um, uh, lifestyles, positive masculinity, when it turned out he had some views that were not positive masculinity in the past. He wasn't upfront or honest about that. It didn't seem like his views had changed too much. His treatment of women didn't seem too great, especially when challenged. Uh, he attacked, um, he verbally attacked Sidney Watson. And uh, it looked like he was not a good masculine role model at all. Uh, and he was selling himself as that. I would say that accounts as a type of, um, uh, maybe uh, is it legal fraud, but it, it's dishonest that you, you don't seem to be a very honest, you know, masculine role model, and you don't seem to be living up to these masculine ideals you seem to be promoting. And Jack Murphy was on Tim Cast a lot, and he was able to get a lot of exposure, get a lot of people subscribing to his, uh, yeah, it's like, I don't know, it's just it's access to listen here, but it was weird. Um, the liminal order or something like that. But anyway, he made a lot of money as a result, okay? Tim never addressed Jack Murphy, and so already people were a little bit, I guess, miffed that he just ignored it. And there are reasons why he can go into as to why. So people were expecting Tim to comment on the Eliza Blue situation, and uh, there seemed to have been a greater insistence that he do this because uh, uh, I think more of his audience were a bit uh, fed up that he was trying to be quiet on certain things that he did have indirect part in, like with Jack Murphy and now Eliza, people wanted to hear him comment on it and also report on the story. Now, this part is, I think, where the most merit has in terms of um, expecting Tim to do something about this because he has built a reputation of being one of the few remaining honest journalists in, on, in media, okay? No one trusts CNN and uh, even Fox News, as, you know, people um, uh, even on the right. I, and so, but Tim built up a reputation and look, props to him, he's done some really good work like the interview on Joe Rogan, okay, where he actually did grill, was it Virjaya Gadi? Um, and uh, honestly, when I saw that, I got a lot of respect from him, okay? He built a lot of credibility in regards to that. But building credibility means you do need to maintain it, especially when you have this reputation, this expectation and stuff. And Tim has come out to say that he uh, won't do anything that he doesn't. He will only comment on things that he wants to comment on. That 
comes off a little disingenuous to me because when you build up a measure of trust your audience as being a reliable commentator on important things that are happening in culture, not just politics, Tim has built up someone who will comment on the culture war, okay? And when it comes to topics of censorship, yeah, the, the, I, especially on Twitter with uh, Elon having control and uh, the fact that there could be such significant censorship on Twitter even now with Elon in control, seeing you know britney get banned then the quartering yellow flash um quartering and yellow flash i think are back because they took down the tweets but britney is still banned and everything this that is a very significant topic in the culture war um commentary sphere okay and the fact that tim wasn't commenting on it was getting people upset as i like if you're a legitimate you know fair balanced journalist why are you ignoring this topic? And people were then starting to speculate. Some of the speculations was, is there something happening between Tim and Eliza? The fact that he seemed like he was running protection against Eliza. And so all this is kind of background uh, to what's what's been happening more recently because I've been paying co close attention to it all. There are people who uh, I have associated with, I've watched a lot, or I've even been on live streams with that are involved in this uh, quite directly, okay? The Quartering, Brittany Venti, Chrissy Mayer, Yellow Flash. So yes, watching closely. And uh, the thing that prompted me to actually make this video has been Tim Pool's responses when he's decided to talk about it because... Uh, Oh boy, there's uh, what what bothers me most, and what causes me to actually you know respond, and make like videos like this, um, uh, isn't just drama, okay? And one of the uh, things Tim was basically proposing is that this is all just interpersonal kind of drama with no real importance or relevance, and uh, he doesn't want a part of it, which are already I disagree quite strongly with because there's some very important things about this whole story that I've already mentioned, okay. And so I felt that was a disingenuous framing of the situation. And then when there's manipulation, subtle manipulation and dishonesty arising, okay, that's where I'm like, nah, and it's I'm going to point out the bullcrap when I see it. I did it with the Daily Wire and the Stephen Crowder thing, and I like them both equally before the whole thing. Well, guess what? There's another situation where Tim, I actually quite liked. I had a lot of respect for, okay. And some of the things he has said in his responses are just, oof, we're talking like Olympic levels of uh, just disingenuous stretching manipulation to uh, try and brush all of this off. And I'm left wondering why. Tim's not so dumb to actually... <laughs> like, believe some of the things that he's been saying. Maybe, I don't know, because... I would think here, I'll get to the specifics, okay? Because this is where some of the speculation comes in. He hasn't yet addressed the actual prob main issues people have. Uh, I want to hear him talk about the actual censorship that happened on Twitter and uh, the Eliza Blue stuff. Instead, is trying to brush it off and then talk more about the controversies that's come out of it. And he says he doesn't want to talk about interpersonal drama. That's not what he does. Yes, that's the only thing he's really commented on and not the actual important stuff that is relevant to the type of stuff he's already talked about, that's in his brand, that's in the culture war, and that his fans want to hear him talk about. And he's completely dodged the issue. And so it's contradictions like that that's making me really frustrated. Hence, I'm making this video because I find a lot of this behavior complete dog crap, disingenuous and dishonest. I'm going to go to the specifics, okay? There's been a number of comments on his uh, behind, you know, paywall stream thing where he talks a bit more about it, and then he's recently made a video uh, addressing it as well, and bad, right? And remember, I had no, like, particular bias on any side to, when I say bias, like, I liked a lot of these people equally, okay? And the reason why I'm falling against Tim Pool is the blatant dishonesty that I've seen him spout. Okay, so let's get started with the behind the scenes thing, uh, the, the members only. And if anyone's saying like, like, not, like, are you allowed to comment on stuff that's behind? We comment on video, on, on films that are at cinemas that are behind paywalls, okay? We pay to view those as well. And, uh, and, and this is the same, okay? So uh, uh, that's that small thing out of the way. So I'm kind of like, 
Well, man, she's not that famous. I don't really care that much. She's not going to change policy. She's not going to have a big impact. There's no reason to give people like this attention. But if she's advocating against child porn and human trafficking, it's like, okay, well, you know. This is one of the odd things that people are trying to get out. Tim has constantly tried to downplay Eliza Blue's relevance to justify the fact that he hasn't talked about the story. That should be a completely irrelevant point when there's prominent people who are being banned off Twitter for the sake of uh, just merely questioning Eliza Blue. If it was anyone else, even if they're so small and irrelevant and everything, what Twitter has been doing to seemingly protect her, that's the big issue here, okay? So her prominence doesn't matter. Hence why the frustration when Tim's just trying to brush it off. But then there's the contradiction. If she is so irrelevant, why did Tim have her twi on Timcast twice? She's clearly relevant enough, and it's because maybe her advocacy work, or uh, but if there's any reason to justify that she was important enough to go on Timcast, then... The fact that should just reinforce that, okay, there's some level of prominence uh, about this individual that would justify talking about the story. And then the main issue, the censorship that's been happening, that's the the big thing. And so it's not a good look. Tim just trying to brush this off saying, ah, oh, she's irrelevant, because that is that is actually an irrelevant point to what's really happening and what people have wanted Tim to comment on. Because, Tim, people have trusted you for a long time. They respect you as a legitimate journalist. And so why then would one of the most trusted journalists in media at the moment not comment on a very significant story about censorship in the culture war? I mean, you don't have to like her. I but, mean, you know. Yeah, you know, the message think, is strong. I think you can't get, I mean, you can be mad at whatever you want, but like being mad at her for wanting to be famous, like being mad at all the teenage girls who want to grow up and be influencers, right? Like the desire for fame and having an individual platform. Is this almost seems like uh, trying to frame the picture that people just dislike Eliza for wanting to try to be famous. I hope they had further context later on because no, no, no. People are disliking Eliza because it seems like she is blatantly lied and attacked people's livelihoods, uh, getting them banned off Twitter, Twitter uh, for false, you know, claims and everything that they were spreading, you know, uh, non-consensual nude images of her online, which was flat out false. She's been lying, okay? And then the fact that there's legitimate questions about her authenticity, that's why people are disliking her. The reason why I think it's a... Uh, right. I'll, I'll, I'll tell you this. I know it's an op. There's, there may be a lot of people who are tricked by it, and that they think it's a genuine cultural movement. But like, there's literally no reason to be this angry over a low tier personality who just- Oh my goodness, this is such a terrible take. <sighs> there's no reason to be angry with someone if they're a low tier personality. No, 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 no. Their prominence, their fame, their relevance culturally has no bearing at all to someone's legitimate grievances against someone else's actions. If they've done legitimately bad things, yes, they can be pissed off with her. They can be legitimately angry, and a lot of people can be angry. And you know why they're angry? All the reasons I just mentioned. The fact she's been lying and banning people, or getting, seemingly, having a hand in having people banned off of Twitter uh, falsely, and also... If she is claiming to be a victim of trafficking and she's not, that is insanely vile. That's that's such a horrid thing to do. Okay, that's why. The, so, I, what are you saying here? People, people were bringing up all this stuff about her. I'm like, you've researched this girl this much from like her MySpace Yo, days. It's like more than Trump derangement syndrome. Yeah, it's. Like, it's, 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 it's this is such a uh, no it's not it's not more than like are you kidding me tim you saw you've seen trump derangement syndrome right okay this is very much in line it's not out of proportion for what the internet does okay it's like it's similar to what they did with jack murphy they'll dig into someone's past to find out all right they've said uh, this they've claimed this it happened at these times in their lives well we can go back in the past the internet's here forever find out if those claims are accurate or true and when people have done that they have found that the things are not lining up at all with what she has claimed. 
And that is not, like, if you actually want to vet someone's claims of being a victim and then they're trying to profit off that victimhood status, okay, Tim has admitted that, she's a grifter, okay, that's not unreasonable. And to conflate this worse with Trump derangement syndrome is just an insane false equivalence. And it's, it's, it's below Tim's standards and reputations as... as a fair and honest journalist and it's crap like this that has made me get invested enough to make a video wouldn't have made a video okay even watching it all like watching all of this and everything up to the point of the live tim class show wouldn't have done it but it's stuff like this and even even the, the clips i saw from the uh, members only thing uh, was bothering me but then there's more there's actually more than this and now break it down just this alone is so damn frustrating it's like tim what are you doing you have shown yourself to be better than this. I guess, were we wrong? I, I, this, it makes me feel like there is legitimately something behind the scenes going on that would cause Tim to behave so out of character. And look, maybe I am wrong. Maybe I've been, uh, I've misjudged him. Okay. But perhaps, just but hear me out. What if I have it? What if Tim actually does have these better standards that I believed him having? All right. What then could be causing him to behave in such a way at the moment? It's not to say like Tim is above reproach. I've looked, I, you know, I've you know watched Adam Krigler's streams where you find out about him, uh, you know, doing certain things with uh, people who have been employed with him. And Tim is not uh, like a, a perfect man by any means. And uh, there's uh, there's some dodgy stuff there as well. One in particular, because of the past, makes you feel of uh, gives a. Uh, an impression of what could have happened behind the scenes and it's complete speculation but it gives an impression that there might have been a little more involvement with perhaps eliza which has caused tim to not comment uh on it and try and avoid it so doggedly i'm not saying that is the case but i'm saying it's giving the impression and therefore there's other people saying it far more bluntly than me actually claiming something has happened i'm not claiming it has i'm just saying this is the type of behavior that's causing that perception okay and uh, there's other videos of eliza at the tim cast house being way too familiar uh, as in close physical touching foot on crotch kind of stuff not with tim but with one of the other guys i think it was uh uh, I forget his name. Um, was it Ian? I don't know. Uh, anyway, it's like, wow, that is way too uh, familiar for just a regular guest, you know, appearance on Tim Cast. You know, it makes you have these questions because this is such an astronomically dog crap take to try and say that oh, the people's reactions are so cra crazy, hateful, worse than Trump derangement syndrome. They're obsessed. Come off it! It's like crazy. people were, people got yes. mad at Trump, but like the levels of hate and I'm like, yeah, this is, I, it's an op. The yeah. goal is, oh, that we'll get to this op stuff, right? But no, no, this is the same. Uh, it's, it seems the same type of stuff that happened with Jack Murphy. To get people, get get a mob riled up, talk about it, make her famous. Mm -hmm. I, I take a little different approach. I think what Jeremy is basically the, the ringleader of the drama because he got banned on Twitter and feels like it was unjust. That's <sighs> Brittany was banned first. And Jeremy, he he reports on stuff like this. He's invested in the culture war and censorship. So, of course, like, you think it's out of the ordinary that Jeremy jumped on that. In actual fact, the expectation was not only Jeremy would jump on it, Tim would jump on it as well. And in terms of him becoming a ringleader, it's like... It, there's been a lot of people commenting on this. Jeremy is probably the most outspoken one, but to claim he's a ringleader, like meaning he's organizing it all, come off it. That's part of the op, bro. Right, he's being, he's being. It's part of the, the op. Like this, this part in, in particular. Um, Manipulated in a sense. He also has said on his Twitter openly, like, don't, don't rag on Tim. Like, Tim's my friend. Like, you guys are crazy. He'll well, say that I don't follow him at all. He keeps coming up in my. He's I'm not such my a friend. Boomer. I can't figure. Out. And then he'll be like, "Well, Tim didn't do this thing I wanted." Like it's yeah, just like I, mean, I, I actually feel Jeremy the quartering uh, was expressing the same type of frustration that a lot of Tim's own audience and honestly myself has been having with him for him not covering something that many of us have seen to be a significant story in regards to 
a culture war, uh, uh, the you know pushback against the woke movement and everything, free speech. Okay, it's a very significant topic. That's where the frustration is. Quartering, he had trouble, kind of uh, not. When I say he was doing uh, obvious yet subtle digs at Tim fairly regularly, which is of course poking the bear made has made Tim snap, and Tim will mention it here in this um, backstage thing. And uh, not the most diplomatic thing, but I can see it as a legitimate expression of frustration, not just for the quartering, but for a lot of Tim's fan base. I don't uh, want to interact and, with this person. And, and here's what he did. And, and, and this is why all of his fans are mad. We booked him twice. He canceled on us twice. The second time he canceled on us at the exact last. That's not why he's mad about this, okay? Uh, like, it's clear. I've been watching. You know, I've been watching people's reactions on Twitter. He's mad and being frustrated because you haven't been covering something that we thought someone with as much integrity as you claim to have to cover in regards to honest journalism and following what's going on in regards to free speech online and so on. Last minute, and we didn't know, and we had, we had to find someone else. Fortunately, we had Matt Strickland on, and he was never know why I blocked him because he sent me a message supposed to be on. He went on a different show and criticized me for not talking about wow. it. So Tim seems to be saying the quartering was angry because of the cancellations, uh, the two cancellations, but then he went on a show to criticize Tim for what? Not the cancellations, for not covering a story many of us feel has been important. Oh, dude. And then I'll, I'll let everybody who's a member know why I blocked him, because he sent me a message at two in the morning which came off as a veiled threat. It, it really wasn't. I mean, I will try and quote it verbatim what he said. I know our audiences want a war, but I don't. Please tell me your guy is taking her to task. Wow. And I just said, I'm done with this. <clears throat> I don't see that as a threat. Okay. I see that with... Uh, I see that as the quartering saying our audiences want a war and my own audience is going to react negatively if you don't take it to task. But quartering has already spoken about this. He did not mean it as a threat at all. He said, yes, admitted that I, he could see how Tim took it at that. I, I, I don't know. I, I can see how Tim took it as that, but I think you'd have to be, I don't know. So, uh, looking at things purposely in a negative light to interpret it that way because it's just as easy to see that as an interpretation of trying to de-escalate not a threat of escalation and it actually i feel is a, a kind of um reveals that how I, you'd have to be really stressed and ticked off and angry about it to, for that to be the straw that uh breaks the camel's back and it's clear that tim has been really getting triggered by a lot of all of this and that made him snap and perhaps the reason why he uh, interpreted it so poorly was because he was so stressed and already ticked off and he just couldn't see it in the uh, way that jeremy was actually meaning when he sent it so he's telling you to do what he wants basically <laughs> No, no, he's not. Uh, well, he's the, the, you the, the context there is beyond what he said. Uh, my understanding, and I don't know if Shane probably doesn't want me to say this, but messages had been received basically threatening us that if we did not write a negative story about her, we would regret it. Mm -hmm. And then... A was it negative story? I, look, I haven't seen the things, but what people are wanting is you to be honest about it. And so far, the um, uh, responses of the Shane Catchman story, that's, that's the guy's name, have uh, the, the reception has not been good because they feel there has not been an honest, actual uh, review, analysis into the uh, Eliza Blue case. Uh, especially uh, people have been seeing that, you know, the article, the Shane guy has been fam very familiar with Eliza, that there was a lot of flirting going on. And so people were questioning how uh, honest he would be. And Corden was hoping that he would be honest. And he said that he was rooting for Shane, that there would be a good, honest article. Because this thing, a lot of people have already been looking into Eliza. And we know the backstory and we know the concerning things that um, people have raised about it. And so what people were expecting was some good journalism and to actually address those truly concerning things. And I've seen commentaries on the article in fact, the second part's only dropped recently. I've only seen a couple of snippets here and there, but the snippets I heard here and there of the um, second part of the article 
makes the article look like complete crap so far. And so that was the hope. The hope was that there would be honest journalism and they would actually go after Eliza by asking the hard questions. It doesn't seem to have been done that way. And that was what's been uh, I've seen going on. I don't know if these direct things are saying you must denounce her. But the thing is, if you look at all these receipts in terms of the concerning stuff, you would at least be sh- like, wouldn't you be concerned by what's been revealed about Eliza's past? A couple hours later, Jeremy sends me that message and I just said, I'm not playing these fucking games, dude. So you've that 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 is the I guess the evidence I find of uh, Tim overreacting reacting emotionally and not rationally in this regard because he instantly associated Jeremy's messages with these other messages that he is claiming were saying more directly you must announce or you must say you know bad things about her when Jeremy was he wasn't saying that he was just saying he doesn't want a war between our audiences but he did want it what he was hoping that they would go after Eliza properly okay and then yeah Tim is clearly here associating that comment with the other ones getting the same impression from it when it, that's not the actual impression I get from those comments and he's overreacting completely yeah and I just blocked him Hell yeah and people are like but why why did Tim block him well I don't know maybe it was because he made YouTube thumb okay okay so this is interesting because he said he blocked him for that but now he's actually saying there's other things why he blocked them for and it's um uh, the digs the digs that quarterings we get and he has been giving him like one in I will I watched quarterings video where he uh, was uh, addressing some of the uh, Eliza Blue stuff, and there were there were some there were some digs, right? I, I, and digs that are like if I was in Tim's place, I'd probably be a bit pissed off. And he constantly, subtly, you know, in a not you know, but it's very clearly doing it. Uh, big digs at Tim's coffee that he is uh, intending to sell in the first place. He makes a comment on that it, he's been happy to profit off of all the super chats that Tim has been getting for not covering a story. Um, and uh, that look, that was a nasty dig there. And I don't think it was actually called for. It's a clear expression of frustration for Tim not covering the story. Uh, it's not Tim's fault that people have been super chatting him. Uh, it's people's choices to super chat him. Okay. Uh, and uh, Tim shouldn't be obligated to cover. Well, actually, there is a type of obligation to your audience that I think uh, every creator should acknowledge and respect. And I don't think Tim is actually respecting that here. Um, and I don't think that every creator needs to cover everything the audience covers, especially if they're asking him to cover something that is disingenuous. Like if my audience was asking me to cover something that I wouldn't watch based on my own principles and standards, like, I don't know, something that had vastly too much pornography in it or something, of course I would never, you know, bow to uh, however much pressure my audience might lay on me. So there's that side that I'll absolutely acknowledge and fair, but when they're actually asking you to do something that is your brand, that there's an expectation that you would do and cover, that's vastly different to say, I'll never bow to peer pressure and do what you know, people tell me to do. It's like, you, you've built up a reputation that you would do this. Uh, this expectation, this demand, this frustration that you've been coming from is a result of the brand that you have made. There's implicit promises that you have made based on your own credibility. And that's what people have been wanting you to fulfill and you haven't been. Thumbnails of my face with Jack Murphy's beard. Mm-hmm. Shit talked to me while saying, but but Tim's my friend, but you know, he really is he's not gonna address this. Again, those types of comments, um, actual expressions of frustrations of Tim not doing what his kind of implicit, like not like explicitly, but like his, his promise by the nature of his reputation, okay? Uh, that people expect that. Those are the types of things. The dig that, you know, it was his fault for, uh, you know, you know pr- profiteering off of all the super chats and stuff. That, that was disingenuous. And that's the type of thing that I think Tim could have more, you know, legitimate grievance against the quartering of what was happening there. Was it enough to burn all bridges? Okay, I think it's uh, a combination. I would say no, but the fact that I could, he's done it because I, f- I feel like he's done it because of all the other pressures and frustrations and he's obviously been getting a lot of messages from other people being vastly more critical and then he's just kind of been associated. I feel like he's been associating all these other criticisms with the quartering and even though quartering was more subtle about it and not as aggressive, which should be acknowledged because I don't think there was enough aggressive kind of, you know, attacks from the quartering, so to say, uh, to warrant Tim's reaction like this. 
but because of all the other ones, has kind of lumped it all together and uh, is just lashed out, uh, reacted emotionally, is what I mean. Maybe it's because he told us he would come on this show and we planned for it, and then he canceled on us, and I said, okay, well, these things happen. That night, while we were live, he went on a different show and said, Tim Pool is, I'll give him one more day to talk about this. Of tra- so, I, it seems like there's an implication there that the quartering purposely ghosted Tim to be able to rag on him on another channel, and I don't think that's the case, okay? The quartering has talked about uh, the cancellations of the show. He had every intention to try and get there. Things fall through. So, uh, not enough is being given to warrant the burning of, like Tim saying, that's it, it's because of all these reasons, you know? Traveling. Yeah, so it's like, don't cancel on me and then get mad at me that I didn't talk about it the night you were supposed to be here to talk about it. Well, hang on, Th- that's not a fair thing either because you can't, you could still talk about the topics, the relevant topics that are happening, you know, online, even if the guest that you wanted doesn't come in. Mm-hmm. And then don't message me saying, look, he said, these people gotta understand. <clears throat> I know our audiences want a war, but I don't. Please tell me your guy is taking her to task. You know what the quarterings message is really saying there is that my audience is going to be very upset if your guy doesn't take her to task because of all the legitimate things that have been raised about Eliza Blue. That's like, honestly, you try if you're just going to be at least half generous or steel man, or that's even not even fully, okay? I think just almost a basic reading of that, you can really tell that's what he's trying to say. My audience wants you to take it to task because of all these different things. So he's asking, please do your job, okay? And it's not him saying, and if you don't do your job, I'm going to sit my audience after you and then try and do this war between us. It's, it's about as close to verbatim as I can get. My audience wants a war? My audience doesn't care about this e-drift e-girl stuff this is bull crap okay all those people spamming you in chat all right your your chat is your audience okay Uh, like there's be like i'm a member of your audience tim okay how do you think i have access to the members only section all right and i've been annoyed that you haven't been covering an important story okay so yes it's your audience and your audience and to to just kind of belittle the story to brush it off as it's this ego drama it's not that it's actually well, i've said it multiple times it's a significant story about free speech and censorship on twitter that's wrapped up in a potential fraudster ripping people off claiming to be a victim when she might not be because of legitimate concerns that have been raised about her past that you've had her on your show twice it's not just ego drama like you see with i don't know some random thought on twitter and belittling it and conflating it to be the same is really disingenuous and it's, it's such a bad look on you no no it's jeremy who won't stop saying my name and using my name to make videos and to get attention mm-hmm. he does this thing where like if something minor happens to me he'll make a a, a headline like that's outrageously nonsensical. Exaggerated. And look, I'll, he exaggerates it, okay? We'll even go to the Quarterings channel. Tim Pool blasted for article, for instance. I would say that's that's an exaggeration. Uh, though I, I, there have been people blasting him as well. So, uh, but were every, was everyone? You know, I, I actually don't see flat-out dishonesty. And if there is, point them out and I'll acknowledge it. Like, I'll do a kickflip and he'll write, Tim Pool does the craziest record-breaking trick ever done. You know, it's things like that. And I'm just... I, uh, point out to that level. It's like, I'm, I'm done playing these games, dude. There's one way to end it. One... And th- All right, Tim, are you telling me you've never exaggerated your your titles or your videos to a similar level? Let's just uh, Let's just check, shall we? Elon nukes Ukraine government from orbit. Shuttering Starlink, shuttering Starlink after they said F off. Elon Musk's nukes, nuked Ukraine government from orbit, Tim. Did he literally, of course not, but if you want to talk about bombastic exaggeration, you're just as guilty of it as the quartering. Why was Jeremy so obsessed with Jack Murphy? Jeremy is, uh, he's openly says, and is proud of being a grifter and stuff like that and milking drama and everything. Jack Murphy was interesting and significant drama for like, just <laughs> what, what actually ended up, was exposed about his past. It was like, yeah, it got people's attention. 
I, I don't know. I think he felt personally wronged because he probably believed Jack was like the alpha male. And then Jack, the way he handled the, you know, the ex- I don't think so. Exposure of the past porn know. stuff was like felt like a less than alpha response. And Jeremy was like, I had faith in this guy and this guy, mm-hmm. you, you know, probably more like I think he would have milked it for drama regardless. But his friends with Sydney. OK. And Jack Murphy just he unloaded on Sydney, you know, a heartfelt F you to her. And she was not in the wrong at all. So, so, so even just like, of course, that would, you know, prompt him to comment on it alone. All right. And so, so I mean, this is a massive reach here. Even got I don't through know. To past me. I'll okay. just tell you, like, I think, I don't know. The amount of hatred and attacks that came against Jack Murphy were at a higher degree than anyone that ever went after Trump. Oh, come off it. This is bull crap. It's another exaggeration. It's just not true. And like, do you see the attacks that people make against Trump? He's trying to say there were so many memes. There. I, I, no, no, it's not even close. And then Jeremy goes on a show when he was supposed to be on our show to smack talk us and then claims he's my friend. Did he purposely go into smack talk or is he just venting frustration? Okay. Like he did. He did. I, I don't feel it was, I'm going to get, you know, um, Tim uh, when, you know, I don't think that was his intention. Then he makes a video with my face with Jack Murphy's beard. <laughs> that's, that's just a me. But I, uh, is that the thing that I, sh- I hope that wasn't the straw that breaks the couple's back. I mean, <sighs> I'm trying to decide if that would have bothered me as much. I have, like, disingenuous memes shared of me regularly enough, okay? Not to the volume I would expect that Tim um, gets. And so is it the volume that would bother someone more than just what it is? In isolation, it doesn't seem like it was that big. Uh, Like, Tim is stating it. it was this thing, you know? And continually <laughs> talk smack, and then says he's my friend. And people are like, Tim. Well, well, friends do talk smack, okay? To say that, you know, friends don't talk smack. I don't think you would qualify them as friends, though. Uh, even before, when they were on good terms, they were uh, associates, colleagues, on good, on friendly terms. Not actual friends. Why aren't you friends with Jeremy? This guy's not my friend. Did you? And look, just because, you know, uh, a claim of friendship or... Because even if there was friendship, all right, doesn't mean that... They should not, you know, then criticize legitimate things. It was it was very like kind of subtle uh, dig type criticism where he never came out and said, Tim Pool is such a guy, he needs to do this. Or like he was expecting and saying, you know, you should. And I saw frustration vented in, you know, these little dig comments here and there. And uh, it's all, it always seemed like he was holding back um a much more aggressive type of criticism that he would have more easily lobbed against someone who he was not on such good terms with. And so I, that I, I do get the impression. So it's more the inverse that because of potential friendly relations or there were had been some friendly interactions, that <laughs> quarter was actually holding back compared to what he would have actually done if it was especially someone like Keemstar or... Or whether he specifically dislikes him, Star, but he has not hold back criticizing uh, um, Daily Wire hosts or Jordan Peterson or anything on you know that I see who come arise that he feels that does something or says something worth criticism. See, this guy's pi- been shitting all over me nonstop, pi- and I ignore it. Pi- it's <laughs> it wasn't nonstop. It's just the fact that Tim is perceiving it as that shows how emotionally he's reacting to all of this. It was not nonstop. In fact, I think he was trying to hold back, but it certainly was there. There were absolute digs given from the quartering. Digs that were done in... When I, I, I say disingenuous because I feel some of them were unfair. They were unfair digs against Tim, like, you know, profiteering off of all the super chats and that because of the super chats, he should respond. Like, it's a much more fair thing to say instead that your audience trusts you to cover important topics in the culture okay you've covered it before and your brand has kind of built the reputation and in, in, like subtly promised um that this is what you do and you haven't been doing it your audience wants you to do it they're feeling a bit frustrated even betrayed that you're not 
okay um frame it something like that okay then just saying because people are paying you you are you're profiteering and you're not responding and it, uh, anyway i think you get what i'm saying picture of jack murphy's beard as your hat Did yeah, you see yeah, that yeah, one? yeah yeah whatever <laughs> anyway you <laughs> funny <laughs> <laughs> like, <laughs> oh, look, I wouldn't like to be compared to um, Jack Murphy, but uh, maybe I wouldn't be laughing. It was lobbed against me. It's just, but he, that, it does not seem that bad, you know. It's, it's a meme. It's just. Then he told everyone, "Don't go to Tim's website and cancel your membership." I'm. I still think he's my friend. Here's a picture of him with Jack Murphy's beard. So hang on, hang on. When Jeremy said, don't cancel your membership to Tim, he was being sincere about that. That was clear, okay? To try and say that it was like a, don't go and cancel your membership, wink, wink, is bullcrap. That wasn't what he was doing. Like, oh, okay, dude, real <laughs> real good friend move there. Yeah. I didn't know that he that he had, like, been on another, another program while he was saying, he was, well, he was supposed to be on our program. I'm, pr I'm pretty sure I could be wrong, but uh, I'm pretty amazing. sure the night, the day he was supposed to be here, he did a show with, like, um... I think Chrissy Mayer and like Brittany Venti. Mm. And he was like, I'm going to give Tim till tomorrow to talk about it. But like, Dude. he wouldn't talk about Jack Murphy either. And all he had to do was say, I'm sorry, this guy was grifting off my show. He was on every week. And it's just like, Jeremy's just lying. It was like he was on every week. It was almost, I felt like that was the, certainly the impression I got with how regularly he was. Okay. Uh, so hyperbolic exaggeration i don't think to say that's fair to say you're just flat out lying he was expressing something that you know uh, certainly the impression i got like jack murphy was on heaps and uh, i think it was actually pretty crappy that tim never addressed it i think he should have addressed it, the whole jack murphy thing and i uh, quartering was right to express frustration about that and it did set a pattern of behavior that because he didn't address the jack murphy thing he's probably not going to address the eliza blue thing and also by the way Going on someone else's show, that knowing Brittany and Chrissy Myers type of content, that must have been just a, like a Zoom call thing, not in person. It's not like he cancelled Tim because he was going to go. That's just like the thing with Tim fell through, but my schedule is still open because I, I don't know the reason why he couldn't. But there's a lot of reasons you can easily into it as the, you couldn't get to a physical location, but you can get to an online meeting because you just, all you need is your computer. All right. So to say that he purposely ghosted Tim to in preference of this other one, no, that that's not what happened, clearly. Like, Jack Murphy was on 17 out of 400 episodes. He was a... It's, it's way more than so many other hosts. I, Tim, I don't watch you a lot, okay? But the amount of times I saw Jack Murphy on in the episodes I watched was way more than any other uh, guest I've seen, period. Okay? Recurring mm. guest that was here periodically. It was over the span of a few months. We had him every other Wednesday. That was it. Yeah. And I'll be honest... The reason why Jack Murphy every other Wednesday, so not every week, every second week, still a lot. He doesn't come on the show anymore is because I personally felt that the way he handled the situation with Eliza and Sydney was extremely inappropriate. Oh, he, yeah, you said Eliza and Sydney, Elijah. Eli yeah. Uh, not only that, it was, what about him being a bit of a fraud in terms of what he was trying to sell um, his members, subscribers, or whatever? And uh, it didn't seem like he. Well, I, I'd, I'm trying to say, like, I'm trying to remember exactly if he tried to say that, you know, made mistakes in the past and stuff. But it was, he tried to start, he started to try to censor people when they were, you know, calling him out. And uh, he did not handle it very well at all. And if he did believe in, like, actual virtuous masculinity, like the, the positive masculinity that he was trying to promote, the way he spoke to Sydney did not, did not reflect that at all. And so that's the type of, like, fraudulent kind of aspect I see in that personally. Here's my thing. We shouldn't have these fights in public. We mm. should we should sit down like adults, maybe have some whiskey and be like, okay, we've got a mission here. We're trying to better this country, save the world in a manner of speaking. This ain't going to help it. So why don't we figure out what we got to do so that we can carry on a mission that's a positive thing. But this is interesting, okay? Uh, Tim is reflecting a mindset that he's had for a while where he doesn't like to have uh, grievances in public, okay? But uh, it feels like he goes too far with that when he doesn't actually call out people that need to be called out, okay? If there's bad actors in your movement, all right? 
avoiding conflict for the sake of the movement and letting people get away with crappy behavior is not a virtue, all right? Um, this is reality. It's actually better that the movement suffer and bad actors be exposed so people don't get cheated than the movement to benefit overall. Goes into, that's my own personal philosophy. I would rather lose for the sake of holding true to my principles than having won due to uh, making concessions of my principles. Okay? And so, uh, yeah, uh, what Jack was doing, okay, he needed to be called out how he spoke to um, uh, Sydney. And Eliza Blue, uh, there's so much troubling stuff wrapped up in this that absolutely that needs to be talked about and exposed. And to just flippantly, uh, you know, belittle it to ego drama that's not, not relevant and then say that these things need to be uh, talked about behind the scenes, okay, if it's talked about behind the scenes and this type of bad actors aren't exposed as a result, that's a negative towards, you know, the you should be going for virtue, not winning a war, okay? And uh, even if you lose the result of holding true to what is good, that should be the highest ideal, trying to live a good life, not win at something. And look, trust me, I know, fighting against the awful stuff that's happening in society, I'm trying to do my part, all right? Uh, as, and uh, as good people are prompted to do that. Uh, so I'm not trying to dismiss, but I think you get what I'm saying here. So the philosophy that Tim here is trying to say to justify his not talking about Jack Murphy, Eliza Blue, and perhaps even other things openly, or letting bad actors just kind of n almost get away with their behavior because his... Uh, not addressing it openly, not a good look. But Jeremy <clears throat> makes so much of his content off of just doing drama stuff. And I got no issue. TMZ does their thing. I'll, I'll cite them. Jeremy does his thing. Sometimes it's very, very important. But for Jeremy to like... But you do as well, though, Tim. You've milked drama as well. Okay. Elon Musk nuke someone from orbit for saying this and stuff. And you've talked about stuff that's not particularly related to politics. You've commented on films as well and pop culture related things and even prominent personalities, influences uh, and stuff. So don't, don't, like, you, you do it less than, you know, the quartering, but you still do it. Try and insult me consistently over and over again and then be shocked that I'd block him. He didn't try to insult you consistently. <laughs> he was just letting out a couple of digs from frustration. And I get that. And look, in Tim's place, I could see that annoying myself as well i would like to think i wouldn't conflate it to what it's saying here it's like oh, i was crapping on me constantly which they wasn't the case it's mm. just laughable yeah. if anything there's an argument that quartering was actually trying to do a bit of damage control for tim saying give him time give him time to respond and everything okay because there was a lot of people there is a lot of people in his audience i'm one of them that man not only disappointed but Upset and annoyed, okay, and especially with his responses here, dude, I, I, it is cancel membership type of levels. Now, it's not to say that I'm completely, you know, t uh, Tim isn't dead to me and I still think he'll be able to do good things in the future and he's done good things in the past and everything like this, but this is revealing some disappointing aspects of uh, someone's character and I don't you know, begrudge people who then would feel like they want to withdraw their support of someone as a result. Here's what I don't understand. I'm gonna, I'm gonna say this right now to each and every one of you as a member. If you really care about Jack Murphy, you, you shouldn't be a member of this website. That's such a dumb thing to say. Such a dumb thing to say, okay? Just because people are interested in certain internet dramas and there was enough random weird things in the Jack Murphy story to be interested. I was as well. Tim is telling me, who had, did have an interest in the story, not support his website, which is so astronomically dumb to say. Because guess what? I also have an interest in the culture war. I have an interest in politics. I have an interest in society. I hate this crazy woke movement that's going way too far. All right? And there's going to be heaps of people like me that also had an interest in the Jack Murphy story. And you're saying, I, you, it feels like you're saying you're beneath me or you're not going to get that type of... Uh, strong manning is, like, is kind of saying you're not going to get that type of content here. 
I think people be aware of that and they're they're not subscribing for only that uh, or an expectation because again belittling the whole Liza Booth thing is ran ego stuff disingenuous that's not okay it was an important story and so it, it feels like Tim is trying to again once conflate it belittle it make it like you're here for the Jack Murphy you used to stuff you're not going to get it you should unsubscribe when that's not an equivalent of what people were expect what the story actually is I don't care you I'm sorry. You, it sounds like you do. This has been getting to you a lot. Okay. You, you know, and, and the other thing they're doing, right, is they're saying that, like, so I did a video today talking about how the one thing that really makes me want to just quit is the low tier internet drama. Like, I specifically cited the Young Turks and Hassan Piker, mm -hmm. and now they're claiming I was talking about Jeremy. And I'm like, it's because all they have. I don't know. It's just. That one seems a little soft, sir. Just like, ah, oh, it's going to make me quit. And you also encourage it as well, Tim. You've done low-tier drama coverage as well, okay? I'm sure he's covered stuff that, um... Uh, what's that idiot's name again? Um, H3H3. I'm sure you've covered h 3 Let me just go to H3H3 H3 on Tim Paul. Oh, oh, oh you want to... Like, low-tier stupid uh, let's go hassan hassan piker slammed for criticizing mr beast curing blindness but his right <laughs> that's not related to politics it's not uh I, I i tim this is not one that's that it was seven days ago and like i think this would qualify as uh, what how did you say um, like so i did a video today talking about how the one thing that really makes me want to just quit is the low tier internet drama, like low tier internet drama. Okay. I wouldn't consider the Eliza Blue story low tier internet drama. Uh, I would say it, you could, on the same level, in actual fact, there's been vastly more talk about this drama than uh, the Hassan Piker, Mr. Beast crap. Okay. Yet you covered that in detail just seven days ago. Like, I, you, it's, you're getting so sick of this type of stuff that it makes you want to quit, yet you are actively promoting that type of content by making it yourself. It comes, it's hypocritical. This Wednesday, we have a massive show planned, which uh, I don't want to give too much details on, but it's multiple members of Congress. They oh, really, yeah. they like, you know, they're, they're, now that everyone knows, I think Matt Gates said after the show that every member of Congress, like Freedom Caucus or Republicans communications director knows Tim Cast IRL and is like yeah. talking about mm -hmm. it like, mm -hmm. this is a real show where you can explain and talk about your ideas. It's even before he came on, he said that, that they, that's what had been happening in, in well, Washington, so, D.C. So you're you are yeah, you'll still make videos about Hassan Piker mouthing off on Mr. Beast, okay? <laughs> so, yes, your show has become important and relevant and, you know, members of Congress wanting to get on everything. But don't say that you're above, like, internet drama content or talking about, you know, stories in regards to culture war topics and censorship, all right? The Eliza Blue story is exactly the type of content that you almost promised your audience the stuff that you would cover, okay? And that you didn't. I can see why people felt that as a betrayal. I'm surprised people care so much and there, and there are people responding in the chat. They were like, no, it's about the censorship. This about the, about the censorship. No, it's not. It was, yeah, no, it is. It is absolutely about that, okay? It was never about the censorship because they were complaining before the censorship. Right. Hang on, hang on. Okay. Brittany Venti wrote, asked the question uh, to Eliza Blue, shared the picture like you're doing these very provocative kind of lewd stuff and you're claiming to be a... A uh, victim, and it doesn't seem in line with, you know, how victims behave and other things. And she rose questions, and then she was bad. I, 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 this is when it came onto my radar. I had heard boo of it beforehand. So, Tim, if you're going to say people have been saying cover the topic before the censorship happened, where's the receipts? Because, no, that, that does not feel genuine true at all. Like, is he trying to say before um, quartering was, was banned off of Twitter? I... But no, it was the censorship. We tried to deflect it, okay? And it, what's frustrating is that he's been aware that this is what people have the big issue with. People have been trying to tell him. And the fact that he is, it almost seems like he's desperate to deflect away from that, to try and, look, 
this is it, it, it paints a bad pattern of behavior okay because why would you be so desperate to uh, belittle and uh, just reduce the significance of this whole situation and story to try and justify your lack of coverage okay it feels like you didn't cover it for some reason and it patterns of behavior of how of uh, sexy times happening in the tim pool house and other things like that and the way that eliza was flirting and stuff with people when she was there uh and the way that she seems to have a pattern of behavior of uh, wanting relations with famous or influential you know right mm -hmm, right okay that's the it feels like that the story is starting to be portrayed. I'm not saying this is what happened, but this is the impression that it started to give off that you didn't cover the Eliza story because of some reason, if, if not the one that is might is getting implied. I'm not saying is, and any other, I don't know, is because you felt your credibility would be damaged if the story got larger and you talked about it because she was on your show and you don't want the Jack Murphy thing. But the reasons, or I, I, I don't see many genuine reasons why you wouldn't cover it, but you chose not to, okay? And then, because people that upset your audience, and they've been trying to call you out on it, this is a significant story about censorship, your belittlement of trying to brush it off, this belittlement of the story, trying to brush it off, is like, you know, people don't really care about the censorship, they're just wanting drama and stuff like that, feels like really desperate damage control on your behalf. All right, to try and gaslight your audience to say this was never an important story. This is why I didn't cover it. You don't know about this person, so you don't care about it. So you should be okay that I didn't cover it. When in actual fact, no, it's a it's a fail on your behalf for not covering it when it should have. Because why should you cover it again? This is who you have been building yourself up, your reputation up to be. This is the you. You were the guy who would cover this type of stuff. All right, and you didn't. Then people have been upset and frustrated with you. That's what's actually happening, okay? And the thing that's now frustrating me, most of all, is this type of gaslighting, where it's just like, <laughs> it's a relevant story, no one really cared about it. It's like, no, no, bull crap, all right? I've been watching this thing from the get-go, and you're not going to gaslight me, you're not going to gaslight others, that this wasn't the concerns that we've had from the beginning. And so it's just like, okay, well, bro, Jeremy could have come on the show. He doesn't have to. But at the very least, don't fucking talk shit if you're not going to come on the show. You're, you're talking like, uh, like he was constantly ragging on you. It was the occasional slip dig, uh, which I do feel was from frustration because I think Jeremy felt like you were the guy as well. Okay? And when I say Jeremy in the courting, you were the guy. You would cover it and you didn't. All right? And he wasn't constantly talking. And so... Uh, it, the fact that Tim is saying that again, it's his emotional reaction, I think, is conflating with all the other criticism that is being getting from other people and then just focusing it on the quartering. But the thing is about these people who hate her, um, it's it's an op. It's yeah. it's a PR op. They made her. All right. He, this is. Mm. All right. Famous. Congratulations. We talked about her. Like, mm -hmm. I'm not kidding. And these and, and, and it was a PR op to force Tim to talk about Eliza Blue. Bull crap. And I'll talk a bit more about that when he expounds a bit further, which he does on the live stream portion of the Timcast IRL episode where he addresses this stuff. So this next portion is me reacting to his comments about the controversy from the live stream. So one of the first things that Tim addresses with the Eliza Blue stuff is a poll that he made on the public version of the Timcast IRL. And he's trying to come off like he's being playfully trolling but it just shows how much is i don't feels like desperate to uh, not address the actual issues that are at place at play and not address the audience's um actual problems by uh, trying to troll them for instance this is what he does smash the like button and then i also i put up a poll and i said smash the like button if you don't trust Eliza Blue. And 89% said, I will like because I don't trust her. That means everybody who smashed the thumbs down. And just so you know, this has more thumbs down than I think on any videos out of the moment. We are at, is ratioed, uh, 25,000 down votes versus 21,000 up votes. Uh, so I think this is one of his most downvoted videos ever. Uh, comes off as cope, that is, uh, you know, 
Ah ha ha, you smash down vote, which means you trust Eliza Blue. That's not going to, like, help out the thousands of people that are frustrated with you, Tim, there, uh, about not covering the Eliza Blue stuff. Scrotes McGoat says, last night as a member, if Tim doesn't disavow Eliza tonight, get the f out, Scrotes McGoat. You can cancel right now and see you later. You will never wave money in my face and make me disavow anybody. It's clearly not what he was trying to do. He was saying that if uh, you don't act with what I think the uh, commentary is uh, implying journalistic integrity, that he will withdraw his support, not saying I'm paying you to say what I want you to say. Uh, I, people are happy to you know, support you um, even when you say things they disagree with. This is more a matter of your own integrity. Okay, and the integrity that your audience sees you have doesn't seem like Tim wants to acknowledge that that's the issue. Especially someone I care so little about, Eliza Blue. She's been on the show two times. If you're going to cancel because I won't do what you say, you shouldn't have been here in the first place. Bye bye. Again, it's not just doing what they say. His, <laughs> it's an expression of disappointment for you. Look, it did say disavow. Okay. And for a lot of people, they feel that there's plenty enough evidence to justify disavowing Eliza Blue. Okay, and so at the very least, like, I would say this guy wouldn't cancel the membership. Perhaps he might have, but I, I think he wouldn't have if Tim just addressed the issues honestly from the get-go. Okay? Don't let the door hit your ass on the way out. All right, what else do we got? Uh, DJ Zeno says, unsubbed on members only after over a year. Here's five FU dollars for, you know, I'm pretty bummed. Thought you stood against censorship. Hope you change. So that super chat there frames the grievance pretty clearly about the actual issue. It's not that, you know, this is a relevant ego drama. It's not. It's that there's actually a significant, you know, story about online censorship, abuse of, you know, um, the uh, censorship tools on Twitter and things. And Tim has built up a reputation to be the guy that covers it and is not covering it. That's the issue. But instead, Tim wants to frame it like, you uh, are forcing me to talk about things that I don't want to talk about. You kind of said that you, well, when I said you've implied that you would by building the reputation that you have. Okay. See you later, buddy. Look, Sad to see you go, but uh, I will never cater to a mob. And uh, that's it. <sighs> Belittling your audience as a mob when they are expressing their grievances, like legitimate grievances, of you not doing the job that you've built up and implied and given the impression that you would do, all right? That's the reaction, okay? And just say, ah, it's all a mob. And by the way, by the way, that's one of the attacks on the fans that people are claiming that, well, it's clear, calling the, a large portion of your fans a mob, just forcing you to do stories that are so relevant and pointless. That one, the belittlement of their position as a stupid ego drama is, it can be perceived as attack, but then just saying they're all just a mob, okay? And Tim claims in his follow-up video on his actual Tim Pool channel, I didn't attack my fans. That's the attack right there. As well as uh, telling him to, you know, like F off, basically. If um, that, that seems like a bit of a attack as well. End of story. Uh, Eliza Blue is not important. She's not important to me. She's not it doesn't matter about like she's become important okay it doesn't matter if she's not important to you all right is Hassan Piker important to you Tim his comments on Mr Beast is Mr Beast important to you because you certainly covered those stories you're certainly happy to about that all right so the equivalence isn't there like there's another reason uh, separate to importance when it, which doesn't even fit because this is an important story okay there's another reason why you're not covering it that you're not being honest about a member of Congress. She doesn't enact policy. She is. Does this sound Piker or Mr. Beast? A, a low tier internet personality that for some reason people are desperately upset. And he might say, ah, Mr. Beast and Hazan Piker are high tier personalities. I really wish the actual tier doesn't matter. And for me, by the way, Hazan is like lowest of the low tier. I couldn't give two craps about what he says. But you cover that, okay? With, and I literally don't care. 
So uh, have a nice day. I, I got to say this. If, if, if someone got banned off Twitter or any platform for a reason other than violating the terms of service, that's a big deal and should be taken up. And, and we- Yes, but that is the issue, Ian. That is, the, is your name Ian? I can't. But that is the issue. Brittany was banned for things like no breach of terms of service, but she was banned from Twitter. That's the big story. So it's funny. Ian is acknowledging that's a big story, but it's not being covered will be if it happened with the Twitter administration or the administration of the social network. But the personal stuff is... It, it- this is not personal. Like, t- that's already happened. It's confirmed. It's confirmed black and white. You can see the term service. You can see what Brittany Ventney did. She was banned for no breach of the terms of service. So Ian is actually outing Tim unknowingly here. And I feel like Tim is probably just saying, shut up, you know, not wanting Ian to go on this tangent. It's, it's, inna- it's like, no offense, TMZ. TMZ garbage. It's... <laughs> See, now this is all like, it feels like Ian is trying to belittle the whole situation's TMZ guy, which when it's not. Ian, the thing that you said is a big story has actually happened. That is the big story. It's, you can confirm it. But I only take a little bit of what? Journalistic integrity, a little bit of research to confirm the big story. It's like National Enquirer. I mean, if you like it, oh God. <laughs> but there's look, a look, lot look. we can it's build. questioning you. I don't care if people care about this stuff. They're allowed to. Yet in the members only segment, you say, if you like this type of stuff, you, this is not the place for you. So you do care that people care about you. I care. The members, you literally say, oh, look, shall we go to it? Here's what I don't understand. I'm going I'm to say this right now to each and every one of you as a member. If you really care about Jack Murphy, you, you shouldn't be a member of this website. If uh, you feel it concerning enough that people are interested in the Jack Murphy story that you think they shouldn't be members you do care about it you care enough to tell them this okay so look i'm calling bull crap on your line that you know oh it's okay if they like you don't think it's okay you think it's so not okay for people to be interested in the drama type tmz stuff as you are equating by context the jack murphy thing to as clearly the overall context of what you're saying here you care enough to say that you shouldn't even be members all right and so this two-faced Double speak bullcrap is very freaking frustrating. Most people listening are like, I have no idea who these people are. And that's exactly it. So if no one's ever heard about Eliza, therefore, you, Tim, will, you should not talk about her. And uh, you are wrong for being upset that he's not talking about her. OK, this is a, such a disingenuous deflection. It is really bullcrap. And it's one of the things that has prompted me to do this video. OK, it's this type of disingenuous manipulation try and because people who perhaps don't know the background well they'll take this at face value and it's like yeah this is a real story Tim is justified not talking about and actually it's vastly more significant and this is bad manipulation bad faith on Tim's behalf so what I think is going on to be completely honest is that the people who are claiming they hate her are actually probably a paid reputational firm to promote her this is his most insane take it's it's completely t- what the hell are you talking about <laughs> so Brittany was paid by someone to ask eliza this question and you know what's also more insane it's like this is a ploy to make eliza blue famous really because infamous would be the more accurate term than famous okay i mean she has lost so much credibility throughout all of this by her actions her censorship, Eliza Blue I'm talking about here, and uh, now also legitimate, you know, doubt on her claims of being a victim. This has not been good for her at all. And Tim will go on to say that all press is good press or something along those lines. And that's, that's just wrong. It's not true. Do you think Jack Murphy won out from all the additional exposure he got in that debacle? Do you think Mundane Matt um, has a better career now after he was exposed for false flagging all the people criticizing him? Bull crap! That, like, all press is good press and that this is w- what she wants and, it, and it's, you know, even talking about her is going to benefit her. No, I, like... Tim seems to think that this was a psyop almost. Oh, look, it was a PR firm operation to get him to speak about her because him just even mentioning Eliza Blue's name gets them what they want. She's now famous. No, no, because if someone actually like they try, Tim's trying to say you would pay for this type of exposure and this is manipulation to get me to speak about it for free and you're going to get it for free, right? 
if someone actually paid you to speak about a sponsorship, they're paying you to speak about it positively. All right. Uh, Kami Koto approached me to do a review on their knives, paying me to speak positive things. I looked into it and found that they were a bit of a scam. And so I, instead I did a video exposing them as a scam on my other channel, Shadowversity. And uh, do you think Kami Koto still won out because they managed to get me to like, speak about it? No, no, they did not. And now other people have spoken about it as well. And they're, ex you know, everyone kind of acknowledges Kami Koto knives. A dog crap. Well, they're cheap, and the amount they're selling them for is a complete scam. That's uh, that's the thing, and that's why they're dog crap. They actually are functional knives for you know five, ten dollar, fifteen dollar knives or something like that. But for two hundred, three hundred, anyway. So, oh, did they win out? I, I, I managed to talk about no, no. And the way you're talking about Eliza here, you think this is going to benefit? Uh, so, this is so stupid, such a dumb thing to say. But he goes on. I'll listen to him. So that's why I brought this up last week. There are, the, there are companies you can hire that will spam the internet to generate buzz and attention for you. I don't doubt that that's the case, but do you think this is the type of, like, if I hired a company to get attention and exposure, and this was the type of attention and exposure I got, I'd freaking fire them and sue them. This is insane. This is not the exposure they want. And then to claim that the main people talking about this, people that I know and associate with, like Brittany Venti, like the quartering like Chrissy Mayer, like Yellow Flash and everything. Our Umbrella Guy, I think, is doing a lot of videos. Oh, I actually, I haven't seen the... He's doing videos on Tim Pool now. Um, but he might have done ones before. But still, like, they're, they're, someone is paying them off? Uh, <laughs> I don't doubt that uh, perhaps, uh, you know, there, there's drama and views to be made on the subject, and that might be it, but what the PR firm is paying, yeah, it's, 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 it's such a retarded take. Either it, there's no such thing as bad press. See, bull crap. Free, again, ask Jack Murphy that. Ask Mundane Matt that. Do you think Eliza Blue is happy with all the uh, like attention she's been getting, being exposed that her uh, you know history isn't lining up, and she might be might be a complete fraud if she can defend it, provide the receipts. She doesn't seem to be doing that. Like seriously. Again, I want to listen to that again. Like generate buzz and attention for you. Either it, there's no such thing as bad press. No such thing as bad press. Bullcrap. That is so stupid. And I want, I, I'd like to believe Tim is smarter than that to actually believe that. Like, really. You could just look at the examples of people who got exposed, got the press, and it was really bad for them. Their careers got destroyed. All the extra, you know, press Kanye West got. How's that going for him? You know? I. I even in recent memory, this is such a stupid take from him. And it feels like the... Uh, has he said this before? Is this something he's believed consistently? Because if he has, okay, I'm wrong. But it feels like that is only saying this to deflect this whole issue and to make it you know, gaslight the audience like, yeah, it's just a conspiracy. It's a PR firm forcing you to do it and there's no real controversy happening here and it's all for a benefit. I... It's insane. But look, if he if he believes that sentiment that no press is bad, press, like, I disagree. It's, it's utterly stupid. Obviously, it's not a universal truth at all. And especially not for Eliza in this case. So when I see people like flooding our comments and saying things that aren't true, like I'm canceling my membership. Yo, I can see who's canceling the memberships. Uh, this is interesting. OK, so he, he's trying to say that all the people flooding the comments are bots. <laughs> Eliza is grifting to get money. I don't think she has the money to be able to pay a firm to then get another bot farm to do, like flood your chat with all this stuff, right? And th no, this is very common. Uh, we see this in the uh, happened before in the internet to show that this is a fan base that is pissed off, okay? And they flood comments and they do. <laughs> If we see this type of stuff again and again happening in chat and stuff. And so it's the internet doing what the internet does. And to claim they're all bots is insane. And then, like, if this is something that Eliza is paying for, a PR firm or something, or someone for Eliza is doing it, how is it returning? Where's the return on that investment? Is he making much money as a result? Or like, are all the bots flooding your chat, forcing you to speak about it, going to get her money because you mentioning her in not a good light either by the way is get people to hire her to believe that she's a survivor not a chino 
Like I, I can literally, I own the website. And this past this past uh, week, we have gained mo slightly more members than we normally gain. I have a feeling that's not going to be the case after this video. This is the first video when Tim has actually addressed it more in more detail. Okay, and people have been not been happy with his response. To, and just looking at the downvotes of this video, so Tim is saying he hasn't lost many members at this point in time. Well, I wonder how that's going for him now. Uh, you know, a week past, especially with these videos dropping. Um, I don't think that'll be the case anymore. I think you will have lost more. And you can see that he's certainly lost a lot of subscribers. It, look, Tim Pool is not going, this isn't going to destroy him. But, it, like, it's so interesting. He obviously knows that the backlash hasn't crescendo. The, the, the full backlash is going to be a response to these, these astronomically bad takes he has in this video. All right. And so the, he thinks that because people have been frustrated him not talking about it, that no one has, I, I, therefore, they should have uh, unsubscribed and not be members because they've just been frustrated. So far, is proof that the people expressing the frustration in the chats are just bots and that this is a PR stunt. Like, this is so dumb. It's like, no, people have been holding on, waiting for your response. This is your main response that you do. And you go, now we're talking about it. You say it in the video. This is the main response people have, right? And people will judge to keep their membership more so based on this, what you're doing now, not the build up to it. But Tim is trying to equate the frustration in the build up to, um, that they should have been unsubscribing because they have all he says they've been gaining and losing as normal he implies that that uh therefore all the people expressing this thing is must a result of being paid off by pr firm oh, it's such an insane take this is terrible uh. i think that many of these people i think two things are happening one a lot of it's inorganic promotion of eliza blue Inorganic. And so that's like um, the PR firm stuff. It's like, not a chance. It, I, a lot of people are talking about it on Twitter, a lot of people retweeting and everything, and, and that's organic growth. A lot of big YouTubers um, are speaking about it. A lot of YouTubers with significant followings uh, are mentioning it because a lot of these creators are connected. Uh, as I'm connected to a lot of them, right? done podcasts with him on FNT with Chrissy Meyer and um, I've also been on FNT Friday Night Tights with uh, with Brittany and she'll be on this week depending when this video comes out it might be after um, I was on FNT with her but we'll be connected so we have mentioned it just in passing I haven't done deep dives um, but there's a lot of people mentioning it that's all very organic because so many of these YouTubers and influencers are connected and they're talking about it and so it's a result of inorganic traffic when large YouTubers are being uh, and, and influencers are being banned off of Twitter from talking about this stuff come on this is a ton of content flooding the internet bringing up a personality no one's ever heard of makes her instantly famous to even the likes of you know nine time Grammy nominee John Rich who's not heard of her She's famous now because it's the Streisand effect. That's what's causing it. She tried to suppress legitimate questions about well, her claims and Britney getting banned was the worst thing she could have done because that has just Streisand effect into the stratosphere. And it's all organic. This happens naturally, the Streisand effect, okay? And Tim, he's, he's smarter now. Like, he's smarter than this. Obvi I, I, it feels like there's something else causing him to play stupid because at any other day of the week if this was something else it feels like what i'm saying uh, he would be saying what i'm saying because it's that it's just so obvious you don't even need to be smart to see it all right mm -hmm. that's the point they want us to talk about her because they're being paid mm -hmm. to generate controversy they either want who's they because when he says they uh, like he's talking about a quartering britney and stuff uh, me <laughs> Piss off! No! Like, it's such a disingenuous claim, and it's an accusation, and a really bad faith one. It's just... <laughs> a, it, that's why it doesn't matter if we say anything good or bad. Yeah. If we, say, we, if we say, look... No, no, it does matter, okay? Because not all press is good press. I, it's... We're doing the story, Shane Cashman's... Nope, nope, it's bad. Mm -hmm. We, You know, it's bad. It's bad if he doesn't cover it properly. All right. Of course, you would have come out easily 
not only on top, but like, you know, respected for it if you just covered it honestly and condemned the censorship for the fact that Britney was banned for no terms of service breach, okay? Condemn that. That's what you're expected to do because that's your reputation. That's what you have claimed the type of person you do. You are, is it not? Okay, again, censorship, pro-free speech. That That's why people are saying you should be standing up and denouncing the censorship. You've claimed to be that guy, right? If we, say, if we say, look, we're doing the story, Shane Cashman's, nope, nope, it's bad. So what you're seeing here is bull crap, that no matter what you say, it would be bad. No, if you just said the thing that you, I like, stood up for the thing that you claimed you stood for, people would be praising you. They'd be, uh, or they would just say, good, Tim, do, Tim is doing the work that he is doing. Uh, he's still on track, okay? Um, but you're not doing that. And now you're trying to say, no matter what we say, we, well, now you're, pro you're, you're digging yourself into a hole and why are you digging that, that hole deeper by what you're doing here? Because holy crap. It's a, it's, a, it's a PR campaign in order, uh, I think people are being paid to promote. To who? Who do you think are being paid? Like, seriously, name the names. I'd love to know. Because this is, I was going to say, I'm saying insane a lot because it is insane. It's crazy. It, it, it's, it's, if you want to, an example of what actually feels like a paid PR campaign was all the fluff pieces that mainstream media was doing for Amber Heard during the Heard and Depp trial. The fact that they were denying and ignoring so many points of evidence that she was the abuser, right? And all these positive articles were all on her side for so much already. That seems like, uh, you know, a paid PR campaign kind of thing. But it, this thing it could also be excused by the fact that... Um, the believe all women narrative and the alt mainstream media is so woken on that side and everything like that. Like, uh, that would also logically explain it. But there's more grounds to claim that being a campaign thing because the, uh, I haven't been seeing a lot of fluff pieces for Eliza Blue, except maybe the Shane Catchman one that Tim Cast is doing. <laughs> But there was like a more honest one from some other source recently, um, and even more left-leading uh, places. Uh, I've seen commentaries and videos are actually acknowledging, addressing it, doing your, what we thought you would do, and they're doing it more honestly than what you're doing. Tim. <laughs> and so, if it was a paid PR campaign, why is it all negative? Well, at least most of it certainly seems like it. The only people that might actually be more um uh, the only group right that there might be more justification of claiming you're getting paid off to uh try and do damage control for eliza blue is you tim and, the, and your business and shane cashman and stuff and you don't need to be paid money by the way to get paid in something but like serious Questions are being raised as a result of this. And so if someone's getting paid to do damage control, it looks like you at the moment because the fluff pieces seem to be coming. Oh, my goodness. And so th what Tim is saying here just comes off not, not only as tone deaf, but also hypocritical because you're all the one probably that looks more guilty of this man. Oh, my goodness. Yes, exactly. And so I'll be completely honest with the Shane Cashman story. I told Shane Cashman I didn't want him to do the story because he went from... Pro I think that would be a safe thing because uh, so far it seems like he's doing damage control for Eliza. I haven't read the thing, okay? So take that with a grain of salt. I'm not saying that as an informed thing. I'm just commenting on commentaries that I have seen it and those commentaries could be biased. I acknowledge that. Uh, so the other thing, fair thing with me to read the whole thing. It's just the impression that people are responding with so far. Profiling Ye to Carrie Lake and now to a low mid-tier internet personality. Again, the, the whole belittlement is low mid-tier, it's irrelevant. No, 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 no. Even if you, you, would not, you think she's low mid-tier, which I don't think she's not anymore. Now she's a significant player in a lot of um, conversations, okay? Fraud and trafficking and censorship and all that stuff. Now she's significant. But even if you want to get like, she's insignificant, those stories around her are very significant. Okay? Over, over, you know, that, that I just think the next, he, like, he... And, you know, like, you're not beneath diving into internet drama and stuff around stories that, like, 
what Hassan Piker said about Mr. Beast is so less relevant, and personally I care so little about, and I think a lot of people care less about that, than Twitter actively censoring people and that there, other people might have influence to the trust and safety to get people censored and banned for not breaking terms. So like That's a much more significant thing in regards to the battle for free speech and what's happening socially. What friggin' Hassan Piker says, but you devote a whole video for that. Or you, I don't know if you devote it. You commented on it. It's, it's on the Tim Cast RL thing. He was supposed to be interviewing Andrew Tate. We, we reached out to Tate. I, you know, I, as Shane mentioned, this may kill the story. And uh, Tate said yes. Mm. And so we were like, this is, this is great. Shane writes tremendous work. I no, not from what I've seen. I haven't seen the whole thing, but I have read snippets and I do not like the style at all. I hate that. Style. Right now, there's a massive campaign from high profile personalities to promote and make Eliza Blue famous. This is a, 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 tripling down now by this point. This is insane. This is she has stated she wants to be famous, even to Shane Cashman. Yeah, this type of famous? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Not, not like this. I feel like, you know, the uh, Matrix where, um, I forget who, who she, the character, but, you know, before she is about to get the plug pulled out by Cypher, she's like, not like, not like this. I feel like that's Eliza Blue. Someone meme it where she's like, I want to be famous, and then not like this. Because... Like, mm -hmm. And so they're coming and spamming us with comments to force us to talk about her like we are right now to make- Oh, wow. Well, I, he's, uh, he's saying that the um, people spamming the comments are to force uh, Tim to talk about it like he's talking about it. No, they wanted you to talk about it honestly and genuinely, okay? Address the actual issues. And the PR firm, if, they, if this was their ultimate goal, they would not want you to talk about it like this. Not at all. <laughs> well, actually, maybe they want Shane to talk about the way he's talking about it. Make her more famous. Yep. It's working, and I'm des. I, I was like, let's let's not let's not go anywhere near this, because someone's getting paid. It's mm -hmm. a PR stunt. This is such an insane deflection, and this is the thing that is causing people to question, like, why I? Because it's not a PR stunt. Surely he couldn't be that dumb to actually believe this. And so, why is he doing it? And that's the question people have. Why has he? Why did he not address the issues to begin with? Why is he not being honest about the actual issues that are at play here and why people are concerned about this and claiming that people are getting paid off to just drum up things to make it like, come on, holy crap. It's working. Yeah. There you go, guys. I've addressed it. Have a nice day. And then all of these other people who I know, like who have been members of this channel are saying like, why won't you get on board, bro? You are walking right into a PR game. I talked about how they do this. They're called reputation management firms. You go to them and you say, they'll say, we're gonna do a two front thing. We're gonna say you're fighting a good fight, but you got controversy. That way we get you on both fronts. People will defend you, people will oppose you. Uh, Tim, you should know what kicked off this powder keg, okay? It was Brittany Venti posting the image with a question. And then Eliza getting her banned, or it seems like she got her banned because Brittany got banned. What, what, like, it, did the PR firm do this? Like, was that their plan? Will we will wait randomly for some YouTuber to pose her a question, and you know, this is our advice to you, Eliza: react in the worst way possible when anyone asks you about your past, okay, and ban them. That's that's that'll make you famous in exactly the way that you want and people will grow to love you and you'll be able to get grift off and get more money as a result like that's insane that's insane and the only other explanation is that they paid britney to do it okay i i'm just getting frustrated here because what what tim is saying is just such clear bullcrap You, and this will result in high profile outlets. That and I'm not saying that there aren't, you know, PR firms or whatever that do this type of stuff, but to try and marry it to the course of events that is all public for everyone to see of what's happened with Eliza is stupid. It's, it's clearly not what's going on. Daily Beast will write about you. You're going to get a bunch of, you know, grifter channels are going to start talking about you, drama channels. Big. Okay, so he's saying that, you know, by. The grifter channels won't be paid, they'll just do it because they're chasing drama, right? And so that's him trying to basically say that, oh, the grifter channels, throwing, you know, it's a slight, slight dig. See, that's the same type of dig that, you know, 
Jeremy Cordering was kind of doing it, Tim, but not. Yeah, but there. So, kind of implying Cordering is a Griffith Channel and Brittany and other things like that. All right. I mean, by that logic, you're a bit of a Griffith Channel too, then, Tim, because you've been commenting on stuff, you know, Hassan Piker and, and Mr. Beast. Anyway, so, uh, but then, like, even if you want to try and say, oh, they're not paying the YouTubers. How did they orchestrate the creation of this controversy? Did they tell, you know, Eliza that? Re whenever you're questioning about your stuff, react in the worst way possible. Bullcrap. YouTubers, we will make you famous and it'll cost you a hundred grand. And yeah. there you go. Congratulations, everybody. You did exactly what the money paid for. And here we are addressing it just for you. Exactly what the money paid for. Again, holy crap. I, like, if Eliza had a firm and this is the exposure, I, sh I would... She would should be firing everyone because this is the worst type of exposure. All right, this is. Oh my goodness! Hope the money was worth it. The money was uh, so now. Now that all that always feels like that like he is saying the YouTube is getting like who? I, I'd, I'd love to Tim to acknowledge that. We'll go to a reputation management firm and say, "Here's fifty grand to make me famous," and they will then spam YouTube, spam comments, and their goal is to get YouTubers to see a wave of comments saying, please talk about this. Then they go, okay, I will. They will then do this. There's a very clever thing. Ryan Holiday did this. He bought a billboard. So spamming, he says they do it through spamming comment section. Okay, Brittany, did you get spam comments? Um, talk about Eliza Blue. Uh, are all the comments in your chat? No, it's not. It's not. Or for Tucker Max. And then vandalized it himself. Then he called a radio station and said, what's this billboard that just got vandalized? Mm -hmm. So then it became a controversy <laughs> manufactured. So you want to know why I think these people got censored on, uh, uh, on, on Twitter? I think it's possible, and I won't, I'll just keep it vague. It is a PR stunt targeting people who talk about free speech with censorship to trick them. Ah, so that's where he thinks it happens. Wow. So he thinks that there is a PR firm who gets paid, in this case by Eliza Blue, to uh, somehow have influence with Twitter trust and safety to specifically censor people who are pro-free speech so more people will talk about it. So if you censor the right type of person, it'll generate the right type of controversy. Holy crap. So... This is, it feels so disingenuous. It feels similar type of brushing off of like, oh, you know, uh, Carl Benjamin, he was banned off of Patreon by, uh, 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 you know, he paid someone off to do it. A, a firm, you know, did it on purpose so he could just drum, drum up controversy. Like, like every form of censorship could be dismissed with this conspiracy bullcrap that Tim is peddling in this case. And thing is, Tim... You've spoken out against censorships in the past. Why didn't you suddenly have this take with all the other things where you've spoken out against the censorship on Twitter? You uh, were there with Jack Dorsey and Vijaya Gade, and you gave the example of people who believe that uh, there's only two genders and that uh, a woman isn't all human female, but that unfairly, you know, causes Twitter's rules to target conservatives more. Is that, was that a PR firm just... Paying, you know, or, or sorry, we're conservatives paying a PR firm who has enough influence in Twitter. So Twitter would censor and target conservative voices so they get more attention um, and exposure on it. This is such an insane take. And look at all the times Twitter, uh, sorry, Tim has spoken out against someone being censored and banned or blocked and everything like that. He's never ever even to my knowledge entertained such a, an insane conspiracy theory to uh, deflect explain away the censorship and now it's coming out it's it's baffling into promoting an individual trying to be famous and they all walked right into it it is it is pr stunt 101 it also makes me Holy crap. And Tim is trying to say it's like, it's so obvious. Don't you guys see it? It's, it's PR stunt 101. Bull crap. Come off it, man. 
And really, one of the strongest points of evidence against this, right, is all the bad, like, press that Eliza Blue has gotten a result. I've not seen a positive article. Even left-leaning articles have been bringing up all the problematic stuff, doing the job that you should be doing, right? Holy crap, this would be the worst results ever. That PR firm would be, like, fight. How could they operate with a success like that? I, to say that you could always draw up any type of controversy and it'll better for you in the long run? No, no. Ask Mundane Matt about that. It's clever. Yeah, it you, is. You spam someone's comments saying, talk about this person. So this is the PR firm. So you pay the PR firm to spam someone's comment assumedly with bots to talk about someone. And so the intention then is for the PR firm to get this person to talk about this person. So their intent would be to talk about them and get exposure. But listen to what Tim says next. Once they do, you then use your multiple accounts to f to flag them, triggering, triggering an algorithmic mm -hmm. censorship. So then their desire to get this person talked about and get more exposure, they then flag that to get it taken down so there's less exposure, in fact, stopping the exposure completely, contradicting the entire purpose of what they were trying to achieve in the first place with the intent that that type of censorship will then cause even more exposure. I'm not saying that when things get censored and taken down that... Um, that uh, it sometimes can't cause more exposure. But to say that that's a surefire strategy is insane because there are so many videos that get flagged and taken down and you don't get more exposure as a result. The thing you were trying to talk about dies. Happened to me when I had a video demonetized, okay? Uh, it was the fight scene autopsy uh, of Rings of Power. Um, uh, the final fight scene, right? Got demonetized. And, uh, sorry, yeah, um, uh, well, it got flagged as having inappropriate material and not safe for, um, uh, um, all audiences. And the video just dive-bobbed in views. And I, I tried to kick up a stick about it. I, I did the whole Twitter at YouTube, you, 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 things screwing up, everything like that. And it did not result in net gains at all. That video died and really struggled to get back the lost views and... Uh, it was all a net negative as a result. But Tim is basically saying, oh, it's a surefire strategy. You do this, you get it flagged, and the exposure, the controversy will get it even more. F I wish that was the case, because I would. What, everyone would be doing it. I'd be doing it, but it doesn't happen, Tim. Holy crap. That's the point of a PR stunt. They don't want to create a negative perception. They want to create n n uh, name recognition. But they've created a massive, astronomical negative perception of Eliza Blue. So they failed dramatically. Oh, my goodness. Uh, they want to just create name recognition, not if it's going to be that infamous, that terrible for them. Like, uh. So for a lot of people, it's a negative name recognition for Eliza Blue now. It's a negative response. Yes, that's my point. For you, who is trying to like, what is this? You're, I don't know, but you heard of her, and that's mm -hmm. all that matters. No, it's not. <laughs> Because now, if someone types it, well, let's let's uh, let's uh, just test this out. Because if someone just, oh, Eliza Blue's getting, you know, name dropped a lot, and so I then want to find out. I go Eliza Blue, right? Uh, all right. Eliza Blue destroys herself with disgusting comments about children. That's one of the first things that comes up, all right? Eliza Blue destroyed my article. Yeah, yeah, this exposure and name recognition is really helping her out. YouTube, one of the biggest search engines in the world. Really positive stuff happening. That name recognition is is going to be really beneficial for her in the long time. Now, let's do a, a Google search and see how well this name recognition is having. What's the truth about Eliza Blue and does it matter? Eliza Blue, the grifter who tricked Elon Musk and the right. A massive attempt at cover up Eliza Blue human trafficking. It's like top Google re results. Yeah, those are the things that are going to build trust in her story and, uh, you know, trust as an advocate for trafficking victims. It's working out great for Eliza Blue. That, that PR team doing their job. And Tim is saying, like, they're getting exactly what they want, the name recognition. This is the result. This is a disaster for her, all right? And if she's a fraud, rightly so, she deserves it if she's a fraud. Um, and the fact that you think that, like, a PR... Like, it... 
I, I if this is a PR firm, I'd be losing my crap at them. They're like, what are you doing? And so people are like, why won't Tim talk about it? Because you know what, man? I caved. The PR firm guys are sitting in their room in West Hollywood laughing their asses off saying, we got it. It normally costs, you know, how, how many tens of thousands of dollars or how many thousands of mm -hmm. dollars to get a promotional push on Timcast? He just came out and talked about it for 10 minutes for us. Because when, P when PR firms or advertisers pay people to promote a, a topic or a product, this is the uh, you know the positivity and light that they want them to talk about. That they would have if they paid you, they would be would be paying you to speak about it in this manner. Uh, I, to equate what you're saying here to what people would expect if they're actually paying for promotion is insane. This is retarded. It's completely stupid. What are you saying, Tim? Come on. Like really, you think ah, I got what they want? I got the free promotion because yeah, this is great promotion for Eliza. Really, come on, man! It's like my kamikado knives, right? Ah, uh, uh, oh, they got me. I ended up speaking about of everything, and uh, you know, me exposing them as a scam was, you know, they were they got they got the promotion for free, and uh, that was uh, just going to result in more people paying for and buying Kamikoto knives because uh, name recognition. I was spreading the name, even though Kamikoto knives is like a dirty name in regards to YouTube advertisers now. And a lot of people are like, Tiv, come on. Guys, you work for a PR firm. <laughs> this is bastard. This is such bull crap. <laughs> And it's gaslight. Like, you're being astronomically disingenuous here. You've made her more famous than she's ever been. Yeah, more be. famous than she's ever been. There you go. But the reality is most of the people spamming us, they're not real people. Like yeah, yeah, okay, yeah, they're bots. <laughs> oh, this is conspiracy stuff. I can't believe it. This is the stuff the left say when, you know, the people do just like uh, rings of power and all the woke media. Like, oh, they're just bots. And they default to that bull crap line. Era. When people, like, look, sometimes it is bots. But if it is bots, you need receipts. For instance, uh, all the views on a lot of the G4 live streams, okay, uh, to just say that their bots would be disingenuous. But when there's receipts, when you actually look at, oh, look at the chat. Like, they're saying they have, like, however many thousand live viewers, and the chat is moving at a snail's pace, like, equivalent if they had a hundred viewers. There's a receipt. There's an equivalent. There's a justification to say, ah, I see bots at work here, right? But to say it without any evidence, without actual good logical reason, is desperate cope and it just makes you look like a liar okay just like the people at hollywood when they say all the negative reviews are just are oh, their bot reviews and everything when the actual negative backlash is justifiable you know results from a large and passionate fan base your large and passionate fan base tim they're a bit upset all right and you're just doing oh the whole bot thing comes off so disingenuous but really, like, if Brittany Venti got banned for violating, not violating terms of service, that's the story. Then why aren't you talking about it? That is the story. If she violated terms of service, then it was a righteous ban. I think the real story is... Well, all you have to do is look at it. And no, I, she did not violate terms of service. It's not hard to find out. The, the most basic level of journalistic integrity, Tim, double-checking something to find out if that's the story as Ian is saying, which it is, then yes, that's why you... Like, Ian is even acknowledging that if that was the story, yeah, we'd be talking about it, that would be the big thing, but it's like a deflection, but if it's not as right, as, then you... Oh, so you're, you're editing it there and you're not looking into it any further at all, and you're not going to address the story. Is that she likely got banned as part of a campaign where someone trying to become famous hires a company who then spam someone's comments with fake accounts to get them to talk about it, then immediately uses accounts to do mass flagging, which result in an algorithmic censorship, meaning no one at Twitter actually looked and saw it. <laughs> Where's your proof? And by the way, I think real people at Twitter have seen it. There was a, um, like, it looks like Eliza actually has a connection with someone on Trust and Safety. She's even worked with Elon Musk and people are, talking to about it because she says she was so actively working reducing cp on twitter right and so 
the most basic double checking shows that Eliza has connections inside Twitter that she doesn't need a PR firm to get this censorship. But Tim's just like saying, oh, no, it was a PR firm and they did mass flagging that causes this. And no one at Twitter looked at it when Eliza has connections with Twitter, showing that there's evidence that there is a, like an actual person in Twitter. That's Come on! When Twitter receives a certain amount of flags in a certain amount of time, so does YouTube and Facebook, Gosh. they instantly take it down because of things like gore, uh, live streamed. So, Tim, it sounds like Tim hasn't looked into the details at all here. The most basic level of research of what's going on, he would know what people have uncovered, okay? And the connections between Eliza and Twitter. And if he did that, it, like, how could he say what he's saying now? That no one at Twitter has seen it and that it's just algorithmic and automated and it's uh, like, holy crap. And so it feels like Tim knew that like this was coming up, right? He knew that the chat was spa spamming the comments. People wanted to talk about it. And he then did no preparation for it at all. And is just speaking off the cuff, coping, reaching and spouting bullcrap to deflect and not talk about the actual issues or explain why he hasn't talked about the actual issues by trying to pretend that they're not there. It's not really about censorship. It's just a PR firm and you're making some famous. Murder and things like that. Then the streamer then comes out and screams, oh, I've been censored because they have been. And that generates the story, which makes the person famous. So it's just it's just too obvious. I'm not going to be involved in that. Too stuff. obvious. He fell down an elevator shaft onto some bullets. So it's clearly suicide. It's obvious. And I was, just because you say something, you know, in a serious sense, it's like it's clearly obvious and, and therefore you expect people to just follow along with your casual doesn't take away the insanity of what you're actually saying. <laughs> They're all bots. <laughs> Off. That's the extent that I'm willing to be involved in it. And to anybody who has no idea who these... I mean, oh, it's, it's it's genuinely... I, you would have been better off not speaking at all because this made it so much worse. This is just like when Jeremy Boring responded to uh, Crowder and made it so, so, so much worse. Oh, my goodness. These people are. I thought it was worth talking about so you can understand how these, these PR reputation management firms work. Where is your evidence? You have the slightest bit of evidence to justify this. Like, seriously. How they generate images of individuals. I, without evidence, this is just a, a crazy conspiracy theory, especially when there's evidence for the contrary that Eliza has direct connections with Twitter and influence and ability to, you know, get people like, because it wasn't just, you know, Britney that was banned. Okay. And it really feels like even after manual, it really looks like people in Twitter were doing it. And so you, you come off like this crazy conspiracy theorist right now. Dylan Selking says, Tim will never read my super chats. <gasps> Zing, oh, got him. Got him, got him. But the question is, would you have read it if you didn't say that? Was that a bait? And if it was a bait, Tim just fell right into him and you did exactly, well played. You did exactly what I wanted, Tim. Just because <laughs> he was saying, you know, you did exactly what the PR firm wanted. And he's like, don't you feel stupid for falling into the trap? Tim, how do you feel? Mary says, I'm not a paid bot, Tim, been a supporter for years. I hope you realize what an insane take this is. This is an insult to your viewers and supporters. Well, I got nothing else to say. I mean, look, uh, Eliza this can't make anyone what happy. Are you, are you <laughs> what, what, you can't, how, like, seriously, how do you think uh, accusing so many of the, his own fans as bots was like not going to make him happy? It's like, uh, <laughs> No matter what you do, you come back here. There were so many things you could have done to make him happy, like just stay true, stay true to the standards in which he set up that he held. Okay, that would have made people happy. They will support you for standing up for what you believe, and then get mad when you don't believe what they want you to believe. No, 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 no. They will support you when you stand up for principles that they believe in, and they will not support you when you betray those principles. That's what people are seeing here. Okay. And look, this is what will make me um, in my uh, membership on Timcast. Uh, I, it's made me really disappointed in him. It's not to say I won't renew it if he gets back on track and does a good job and, and fights the good fight. But this is uh, 
a bit of a black pill for a lot of people who supported you, Tim. Like, seriously, you've not made yourself look good at this at all. And he basically doesn't address the criticism here that you actually think I'm a bot, I'm insulted by it. It's the essence of what, or, or, you know, spirit of what she was saying. And he just, you know, he says, oh, that's what I've said. And he doesn't even really acknowledge it. It's remarkable to me when uh, Jeremy Hambly goes on his show and says something like, Tim won't address the Jack Murphy stuff. And it's like, interesting. I wonder if anybody who is paying attention to a Chinese balloon carrying potential explosives of the United States is concerned about what some, some video some guy produced. Me and a lot of your own audience. You really, I, this is unbelievable disingenuous assumption. It was, oh, I clearly had my audience, my, my, all the people who watch me are just far too intelligent to be care about a Jack Murphy and E V and internet people and dramas like <laughs> Come on. So if like you're interested in interpersonal drama and e girl celebrity stuff, Timcast is not the channel for you. Holy crap, that is where uh is that almost worse than his, like, everyone's bots PR campaign op thing? Because that is such a bad take. And if that's the case, and then I don't want your money. Like, dude, it's it's remarkable that people are like, Tim, if you don't address e-girl drama, I'm going to cancel on my... Yeah, and he keeps just doing it, belittling it as a girl drama when that's not the case. Like, okay, all right, we'll cancel, I guess. I don't know. You know what we're going to do this week? We are going to be uh, uh, potentially talking with some members of Congress. And, and you'll also comment on stupid random comments Suzanne Piker says about Mr. Beast as well. Because you're not into the e-drama, are you, at all, Tim? And um, because I, what I'm concerned about is, will people have enough money to pay their bills? Will fuel prices be too high? Is China sent preparing for an attack on Taiwan? And what Hassan Piker says about Mr. Beast. What I don't care about is, did E-Girl lie to get- oh, That comes off so damn hypocritical here. Like this is, it feels like a really disingenuous gaslight. Like it's all beneath me, but it's not. You prove it in your your own commentary of what you cover, it's not. Famous. There's an Abraham you're Lincoln. A, you're, oh, quote, I was gonna interject. I was gonna say, like, you're allowed to care about that. That's fine. But But, but if you do, Tim cast and stuff. It's not the place for you. He doesn't want you to support. Don't be surprised that I don't and don't care about it and don't want to talk about it. All right. So first hypocritical because he clearly talks about e-drama bullcrap with truly irrelevant people about truly irrelevant people. And Tim, when you say don't be surprised that I don't care about it, what people are surprised about is that you don't care about a very important story regarding free speech and censorship. You claimed that you did, all right? People feel betrayed. That's it. That's, they're surprised that it seems like you don't care about this instance for whatever reason, which we don't, but well, what has Eliza Blue, it feels like, does she have something on it? I don't know, it's, it just causes conspiracies because why on earth? If you have claimed so much to be this principled reporter in favor of, and uh, fighting for free speech and against censorship, why didn't you cover this significant story? It's, it's crazy. And so here we have Tim's most recent video on his Tim Pool channel addressing the quartering stuff. And uh, there was just comments in this video just set me off because Tim has like said some bafflingly like stupid things so far. Uh, also being dishonest and disingenuous in parts, but in this video, he actually is very dishonest, more dishonest than, you know, we've seen in this whole thing so far. And that was the tipping point. Where I was like, I can't, and hence me making this video. So here we go. So the beginning of the video, Tim basically tries to set up a framework where he equates the quartering and other people, like Brittany Vettney and, uh, and others, equivalent to... Uh, uh, drama farmers and quartering is in drama, but in the same vein uh, and specifically as dishonest and disingenuous as AOC and the Young Turks. And when I heard that, I was like, wow, really? And then he claims they lied about something which they quartering blatantly did not. 
And so Tim's the one lying through his teeth. And by his own analogy, therefore, he is more like AOC and the Young Turks now. Because holy crap. But the first part of the video is framing this picture. Now, for me, I've got people mad at me right now. And admittedly, it's a small uh, portion of, you know, people who follow me. Small per- portion of the people who follow him. At the moment, he has more dislikes than likes on his recent Tim Cast IRL. I think it's more than his acknowledging here. So Tim just went on this um, explanation that AOC basically is a liar and she it's fake out- outrage and it's all performative, okay? Uh, and so, look, that's right to call out AOC like that. She's extremely dishonest and disingenuous, you know, posing for photos and all those things. But then he is trying to get, he's going to try and draw an equivalence between AOC and others. There is no real path forward or, I don't know, maybe that's just human nature. Humans want tribal conflict, and they will get it no matter what. Not necessarily. Don't get me wrong. Tribalism is an issue, and people fall into it naturally. Okay, uh, But I know for myself, it's something I actively try to work against. Okay, I like Tim, and say the quartering, equal measure on either side. Uh, it wasn't my tribalism for the right that is telling me to not call out crap even on my own side when I see it. Tribalism would be a type of reflection of that, where you are so tribal in your side winning that you don't apply your principles to your own side because of tribal, you know, loyalties. So, uh, Tim's basically almost trying to say, uh, because tribalism is impossible to overcome, which it can be overcome, is there any point... So I'm not on board with the uh, kind of framework he's trying to set up in this discussion. But I'm not interested in pandering to anybody for any reason. And if that means you will unfollow this channel, you will unsubscribe from my website, then you should have never signed up in the first place. This is disingenuously framing what's going on. Oh, yes. He will not pander to his own audience to do what they want already mentioned this a bit and this is the comment that you know sparked my thoughts where i've mentioned in other parts of the video is that you do develop a trust with your audience where you actually promise things unspoken and tim you've done this as well you've presented yourself as an ethical journalist who will cover the stories that need to be covered deserve to be covered speak out against censorship and support free speech All right. Fulfilling the promises that you have given to your audience is not pandering and your audience being rightly pissed off at you for betraying certain promises and trusts that you've built with your audience is not them being bots or being disingenuous when they call you out on it. And you are not being a virtuous principled person by belittling what's going on as, you know, you just want me to pander to and and do what you say. No, that's not what's going on any reason. And if that means you will unfollow this channel, you will unsubscribe from my website, then you should have never signed up in the first place. It's just such a dumb take to say, ah, oh, you, 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 know, you shouldn't even be here. It's really bad look. And again, it's belittling the whole thing because people signed up not because they thought you would pander to them. They signed up because they trusted you and they thought you were going to uh, Fight the good fight, as you have constantly presented yourself to be doing. And so what you're saying here actually is proving your own fault in this regard, because you're saying, I will cover what I want to cover. Well, oh, let's listen to it again quickly. Let's... I'm not going to cater to you. I'm not going to pander to you. I'm going to talk about what I think is important. He's going to talk about what he thinks is important. That's the key, because you've said Free speech is important and censorship is bad. Those are the important things that you said that you talk about and cover. And yet you have avoided a big topic like this, like the plague. I'm going to focus on issues that I think are important. And if you don't like it, I'm sorry, this channel's not for you. Now, what they don't like is when you betray what you just said, because it makes you sound like a liar. Because clearly you don't talk about the things that you feel are important because you're not talking about this topic, which... Free speech, censorship, you say it's important. You... Take a look at what happens when you search for my, for, my, for my name on YouTube. For one, obviously, you will get my channels. You'll get the videos I put up. And then you'll start getting weird nonsense things. We have this one. The Young Turks corrects Tim Pool's brain dead and racist take on Tyree Nichols. Racist and brain dead? Yeah. 
It's shock content for tribal reasons. Anna Kasparian and, and the Young Turks make fake videos about me all the time. Yeah, I agree. Disingenuous and dishonest all the time. But he goes on to try and make an equivalence of this is what people on the right are doing. No, I, I, I see these videos all day, every day from the likes of the Young Turks where they just lie about me all the time. Then, of course, we have everyone's favorite Jeremy Hambly. Jeremy Hambly makes endless videos about me. Um, I get it. They get endless. He obviously makes a lot, but, you know, if you want to talk about exaggerating a point, you know, Tim does it as well. Traffic. You take a look at his Joe Rogan video. Jeremy Hamley makes a video about Joe Rogan and he gets 115,000 views. He makes a video about Tim Pool and he gets 232,000. Not always, Tim. Okay. As much as you might think, you're not that important either. It's because there's current controversy around you. So, of course, those videos are going to get much higher views. All right. Uh, when there's controversy around Rogan, Rogan gets the views. And, it, like, uh, if you really want to have a look at this, let's go to the quartering. I'm going to do the quartering. Uh, we'll go to his videos. His most popular video. It's a Brie Larson one. 6.9 mil million. It's not about Tim Pool, you know. And then we got Stan Lee and uh, girl on Twitter, Bethesda and stuff. And so, uh, you know, just to say, like, it depends what is relevant at the time. And, of course, gets the views. And as we see, a lot of other videos have done a lot better than just him. So the ones, you know, Tim is getting viewed a lot now because of the current, you know, issues and controversies surrounding it. And sorry to say that quartering is only targeting you because you get all these more views than uh, Joe Rogan and other things like that. Not always. I mean, it's more than I think he's more happy to do videos about Brie Larson when that's relevant than you, Tim. Um, and so he's trying to frame it that they're just doing it about me for the views and the milking the views. I'm not saying quartering isn't doing it for views. All right. But it's not just about Tim thousand. We scroll down. Here's another video he makes about Tim Pool. He gets 243,000 views. He makes a video about Eliza Blue, 61,000. This is what I'm talking about. Tim Pool blocks me, 317,000. Yeah, of course that one's going to get a lot, all right? <laughs> it's because you blocked it. like, why? A lot of people had questions around it. Views. I don't care. I, I, I You clearly do, mate. <laughs> Sorry. I'm, I'm, I, I'm talking about this only because I talk about what I care about talking about and what I think is important and what should be talked about. Unless it's for some reason you don't. Because <laughs> you, you say free speech and uh, censorship, these important things to talk about. Big story comes up and you're dead silent and you're resistant and then bitter when you're forced to even acknowledge it. Typically, I don't talk about me because most people who follow me don't know and don't care. Tim, you talk about yourself all the time. Talk about your past things, you're doing this, your experience there, the way you look at stuff, your own perspective, the way, oh my goodness, like even if you might not be in the titles, you talk about yourself a lot. I watch your content, so don't give me that crap. But I'll give you an example of, uh, uh, of what this is. Did I attack my own fans? The answer is no, I didn't, obviously. You, you, you did, you did. This is, this is just, it's a lie. I, I think you might actually believe it that he didn't attack him. But Tim, you called them all bots and you told them to F off, right? Um, and to not, you know, if you if you like the e-girls, e-drama stuff, this is a play that I, I think that qualifies as an attack. Like, especially calling them bots. You did. Actually, you're watching this. You're a fan. I never attacked you. Y you did. There was, a, there was a, even a super chat of someone saying uh, they're upset that you claimed that they were a bot, right? Why is Jeremy Hambly lying on his channel? No, and also the Tim Pool attacks his fans thing. Oh, no, okay, so this must be after the um, the Tim Cast IRL where he says they're all bots, okay? Yeah, this is absolutely, because otherwise, you know, Quarterings video couldn't have been there commenting on it. So, yeah, no, you absolutely did, and you filmed this after the fact, and you're lying or are so just drowned in this, like, desire to reframe i will you like it's so you're so desperate to present it as e-drill e-girl or e-drama irrelevant stuff that you're starting to drink your own kool-aid and believing the bullcrap you're starting to spit just like the young turks that's what people do no it's not just like like quarterings title here is accurate there's a lot of people who feel you attack them and i do too i like, it's pretty clear he literally says Look, I made a tweet and I made a little clip. Maybe maybe we'll watch that. Um, Did I attack my own fans? 
The answer is no, I didn't. Obviously, you're watching this. You're a fan. I never attacked you. Why is Jeremy Hambly lying on his channel? Wait a minute. I have no problem telling people who are spamming my chat to screw off. I don't care and I don't want your money. Yeah, feels like an attack. And I didn't even include in the clip where he calls every half of his half of the audience bots. Oh, my goodness. And it actually gets worse um, uh, in the video itself when he uh, continues talking about this. Right. Their goal is just to make money, I guess. Now, of course, they'll accuse me of doing the same thing, but it's weird. I have no problem telling people who are spamming my chat to screw off. I don't care and I don't want your money. So I have no problem attacking my fans. <laughs> I blocked Jeremy Hambly. Why? Because Jeremy Hambly is the rights or the anti-establishment version of the Young Turks. So now, wow, I, like that, I feel this bull, like bullcrap, okay? Now, am I biased? I've watched Jeremy quartering for a while. And this is the thing, right? I've seen Jeremy go to bat for people that he has had no connection with, okay? Uh, specifically, he came out and tried to defend um, people who got banned off of YouTube uh, who were in completely different audiences that he has no connection to. And it was my audience and my other channel, Shadowversity. We call it the community of the sword. Um, Todd, from Todd's workshop, his YouTube channel got hacked. Jeremy went out to bat for him, made a video talking about it. And yes, you could say it's in line with his anti-censorship thing, but not everyone has done that, okay? Jeremy has gone out to bat and tried to support the YouTuber creator community a lot, and he has my respect for that, all right? He does legitimately good things, and I could not think of a, mo a single time that is lied, Maybe I wasn't looking hard enough, but Tim, just in these recent videos, you've lied multiple times. And then to try and vilify Jeremy because you don't like him now as the young Turks of the right, that is as, from my perspective at the moment, to show you the evidence, Tim, you haven't, but that is as bombastic, vilifying, and a disingenuous claim against a quartering as the young Turks does against you. And you are claiming the quartering is more like the Young Turks than what you are doing, which is directly in line with what the uh, Young Turks do. Vilify people with false claims and re representation. It's not a good look, man. Not a good look. So now, not only does it come off as really disingenuous and dishonest, you also look like a friggin' hypocrite. I never attacked my fans. You On did. Timcast IRL in the super chat <clears throat> section, as people were asking me questions about Eliza Blue, I pointed out, I'm not going to disavow someone I don't care about. Someone who'd been on the show two times. That's such a bad take as well. Holy crap. I'm not going to disavow someone I don't care about. Okay, what if they're doing bad things, Tim? What if they're doing legitimately bad things? So this is why it's a bad take. He's basically trying, and maybe he's just being too flippant to be careful with his words to realize that is implying that it is relevance or importance which determines whether you, someone is deserving of being disavowed, not their actions. Now, of course, I think if anyone opposed that to him, he would, you know, acknowledge how, that he's framed it very p stupidly there. Uh, but it, it is, it's so drowning in this cope and deflection that has done nothing wrong here, that he is saying some really stupid things and is not catching himself. Out of 710 episodes, two. Really don't care about Eliza Blue. You cared enough to have her on for two episodes? <laughs> Clearly you care about her in some measure. And the question is, does do you care about her more? Because it seems like you've been doing damage control for her in avoiding the topic. We book a lot of people. We booked the Krasensteins. We've booked uh, um, <clears throat> Matt Binder. We've booked people who are on the left, and I certainly would say are more grifterish than she. But for some reason, these people care all so much about it. Well, it's fake. No, it's not. <laughs> it's fake that people care about it. It's like, piss off, Tim. That's the result. That's the answer. That's the indignation, the rightful indignation. People like me and fans of you. I've been a fan of you for a long time, have. When you try and say that to us i know it's not fake all right and i care about this story do i care about eliza blue not really but i do care about the story and her actions and what she's doing okay but it, he's trying to tell me it's fake it's like it's 
he, he is doing such like such destructive bad like internet you know ho like this is the type of stuff that, yeah you've seen you know internet people do that have ruined their channels before and and is behaving like them and it's like ah, this is like he was talking about 101 stuff like you know this was marketing or uh, you know thing 101 this is like don't do this on the internet 101 stuff attack your audience saying that it, your your interest in this person is fake calling them bots saying if you don't like don't watch <laughs> essentially that's what it's saying like if you like this drama stuff being a member on my tim stuff is not for you like <clears throat> when jeremy i don't grift much but hey if you like my stuff you can support me on patreon or subscribe star or utrian or anything like that support me yeah tim doesn't want to support you can come and support me that's what the grifters usually do when this topic comes up he makes videos about joe rogan he gets less views than he makes videos how, how did i do jeremy did i do all right it's my grift no my <laughs> I, I i have a long way to go with my grift game i know about me that's why he does it I don't like it. Uh, he makes videos about Joe Rogan. He gets less views than he makes videos about me. That's why he does it. No, it's because you're relevant right now. There's controversy, Tim. He doesn't like... How often is he making videos about you, really? I piss off, man. Come on. He's just always making videos about me because I'm just so important. I get so many views. Tim, you're not that important, man. I don't like it. I can't stand it. And you know what? Hopefully, making this video will make these people stop following me. I will make less money, and I will be less relevant to all of these people because... Uh, uh, this is, again, internet... Don't do internet 101. <laughs> oh, and Tim constantly says, like, you know, if it all ended tomorrow, I'd go off in my car and, you know, fish or something like that, skate, whatever he does, right? He says he doesn't care. He clearly does. All right. Uh, to, an, to an extent. And so this is deflection trying to say it doesn't bother. Like, like Tim. It's a, uh, I will say it and I will say it proudly. I never wanted to be famous. I don't care about being famous. I don't care about being rich. I don't want your money. There are ideas that I care. If you don't want their money, you wouldn't ask for it, Tim. You do. This is gaslighting bull crap you do want their money all right you you are happy with the success that you have that you've been able to buy cool stuff and set up cool things and fight the culture war and all that stuff like bull crap you don't care about it you could say uh you know care about it less i don't know just be a bit more honest care about and if i care about them enough i will talk about them so by all means keep making up your trash garbage and misrepresenting who i am and what i believe jeremy hambly or the young turks you're all the same as far as i'm concerned see bullcrap no they're not tim but you are making yourself look more like the young turks than jeremy is come on look this is making it uh, maybe it's the volume i was going to say it may, it's look, making him look like he has a thin skin but He's been getting a lot of criticism from across the board. If he was reacting like this just from Jeremy and the main creators that I've been seeing, I'm like, this type of reaction is a thin skin, but it could be how it's happening everywhere. You saw his chat on IRL. <laughs> it, was, it was a lot. And so I could I could see why it would be getting to him on that, in, in that scale, all right? Oh, but care about them enough, I will talk about them. So by all means, keep making up your trash garbage and misrepresenting who I am and what I believe, Jeremy Hambly or the Young Turks. You're all the same as far as I'm concerned. I'll tell you what I said. On my show, I said, I believed Eliza Blue is trying to be famous. And there is a PR firm that we know of that, uh, that the belief I have, based on what I've seen, is I was going to regurgitate what he said on IRL and it's bullcrap. Where's the actual evidence, Tim? I'm not saying it doesn't exist, but if it exists, then show us the evidence. And you can sometimes dig it out, like we saw with G4 and the bots watching their live streams and now there was no fast chat. I show the evidence. Otherwise, this is conspiracy bullcrap. Okay. Now, not only do you have Jeremy Hambly with 1.47 million followers making up videos where he says Tim Pool blasts his viewers. When I quite literally said, these people are clearly not fans. Quite, you called them bots and you told them to, well, you said, I'm not, I'll tell my own audience to screw off. Right? I, you did attack him you, and it, you blasted one of them. Absolutely. Okay. It's, holy crap. So 
you Tim, you're actually lying here. We've not we we've gained members at Timcast.com. I look, from what's going on, I don't believe him if he I especially now more time has passed, really. Maybe I'm wrong. I don't think so. And uh, all it would take is for him to lie about it. There's there's no basis behind this. It's just the same Young Turks garbage. It- <laughs> We've seen the evidence directly. It's no basis. I come off it. And I'm not convinced that we're headed in a positive direction <clears throat> that's going to be able to solve these things because this is what people really want. People want others, especially those they I respect, to stand by their principles. That's what this backlash is about. This is why I'm making this video, okay? I'm not doing it because I love interpersonal drama and everything like that. Couldn't give two friggin' stuffs what Hazan Piker says about Mr. Beast, or what some beauty vlogger is saying, or what hatred, all that, like, that's the irrelevant drama bullcrap I couldn't give two tosses for, right? What I care about, though, is free speech. I care about culture war, traditional good values, and all that stuff. That I, I care about that. And so when you see someone you respect not standing by their principles that they have shown them and claimed that they'll always do and, and that they're the guy to do it, right? That I'll call out, okay? And at the same time, this whole thing, you know, this movement, this conservative, uh, you know, or anti-woke movement, all that stuff that... We don't need Tim Pool or The Quartering or The Daily Wire or Crowder or anything, okay? I listed maybe five people. The Daily Wire has a group of it, but if you consider the main you know, personalities, right? Uh, those are up to, what, ten individuals maybe around there? Um, if you look at the main host of The Daily Wire and everything, there'll be other people who can do that job just as well. And I'd rather people who prove themselves to stand by their principles to rise to the top. Okay? And so I will criticize the bad actions of the people speaking, the most outspoken, the most prominent people in this movement. All right? Because I want it to be as good as it should be. And for them to stand by their principles, not because I want drama or anything like that. All right? Tim, I liked you just as much as the quartering. But you're the one being spouting the bull crap. That's why I'm making the video calling you out and not Jeremy or not anyone else around this, right? If they were the ones stating the bull crap, I'd be calling them out and be on your side. And when you call someone out on the bull crap and you're in the right, I'll be on your side. Regardless of what's happening now, all right? I'm going to stand by what's correct and what's true. And so his framing that it's, they just want trauma. All the people, all the people in the, you know... The audience, or, but they're all bots, are they? You know, he's trying to say they all just want drama. Is there any point to it and all that crap? Like, bull crap, Tim. You're just really warping the picture, uh, and it feels like cope, desperate cope. 300. What, 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 what do we have? Here we go. Tim Pool blasted for article, an article I didn't write. Shane Cashman wrote it. Yeah, yeah, but um, you'll be blasted for it as well. Yeah, I mean, you were referencing the article in IRL as an, as a point of authority, okay? So you're signing off on its accuracy. It seems like that. You're referencing it as something, as an as a authority source. So yeah, of course you could be blasted for it. It's your business as well. And so you think that you don't deserve any, you know, connection because you didn't write it? And you did have the authority to say, don't do it. You, you said, I didn't want him to do it, but you could have told him, no, don't do it. All right. You could have put your foot down, but I don't do that time. Well, that's one of the times you might have needed to, perhaps. But no, what you needed is someone to cover the story properly. All right. But to say, oh, it's so unfair and falsely framed that people are blasting you for the article. There, there's criticism to be had against you for that article. He works here. But, but he puts my name in the, in the video because I guess people are obsessed with me. Well, you're the more relevant person. That's, I don't think that is disingenuous or dishonest just to you know, make sure, help the video get you know, pushed a bit further. And is, I don't think he's going too far in uh, he's not saying Tim Pool writes terrible article. Um, 
And at the same time, Tim is again framing that they're just putting his name in it because he's always going to get more views in right now because of the controversy. But if this logic was true, that the person that's going to get more views, uh, well, therefore, he'll always make videos on that person. Why isn't Jeremy constantly doing Brie Larson videos all the time? But he can only get away with it when Brie Larson, Brie, Brie Larson is relevant. And people are bothered to, or interested in listening. There'll be times when he puts your name in the article and it won't do nearly as well as other trending kind of topics. But Tim is trying to frame it that it always will be and therefore it always is. No, no, you're not that important, Tim. I would love it if people weren't. Tim Pool blocks me, 317,000 views, and they attacked me for doing it. Yeah. <laughs> yes! <laughs> Because it looked made a, it looked like you had thin skin because you thought the quartering was threatening you, or it was more of a warning that you know his audience, which overlaps with your audience, you know, wants a war um, because people are interested in drama. And Tim, blocking him fulfilled that prophecy, didn't it? What did you think would happen? Seriously. It's like the person who really wants a war. Okay, let's think about this. Who is the person that has done the action that has really made things explode? Jeremy has been making videos on the Eliza Blue, and yet he mentions that you haven't been talking about it. But he didn't burn the bridge yet, did he? Who burnt the bridge? It was you when you blocked it. You're the one who made the action to do the war, all right? There's literally nothing you can do in this space. Jeremy Hambly... The Young Turks, Sam Cedar, they're not the only ones. The crew, uh, Brittany Venti. I mean, oh, piss off. What has she done in this, like the Young Turks? So now you're just vilifying the people who are, or we throw me in the, the you know, group as well, because we have legitimate, legitimate criticisms, right? I'm, you know, I, Brittany, me, whatever, quartering, they're all like the Young Turks, making false statements to farm drama. I mean, these, the, the, these channels, I don't care for. They don't talk about things that are going to change the way you buy food. You do the same. What? what? Hassan Piker and, and uh, commenting on this video. Yeah, that'll affect how people buy. Your I can't stand this. And by the way, you don't know that either. Okay. Like Brittany Venti, the quartering, all the people around it. They actually do talk about important things that affects society and culture, especially pop culture. All right. Because uh, that is culture. What's what's uh, downstream? You know, they're the saying, all right? And not enough people are addressing how the, uh, the woke left have uh, conquered pop culture and culture in general and uh, has been really messing things up as a result. But there's a lot of people trying to push back against that and they're doing great work. The Fellowship... Okay, but Tim is like, oh, because they're not talking about politics, they're not they're not contributing anything worthwhile. Piss off. That's what it feels like it's saying. They're not going to help you raise your kids. They're not going to solve the problem of of crime skyrocketing in your city. Some of the things we talk about can help people raising kids. Good, wholesome things. I know I've mentioned it, I've talked about stuff like this. They're not going to help you understand why uh, uh, criminals are being let out of jails. So the only important things is that, Tim. Cultural things. Free speech. They certainly talk about free speech a lot. Going to mention that? Going to mention any of the good that they do? No, no, no. Now they're all a net, just complete, not even, just a complete and wholesale cancer on society. Because they don't talk about what is now saying should be talked about, even though he talks about irrelevant crap as well. Or according to him, irrelevant crap. In this current framing. But he'll say, oh, they're prominent. No, no, like Hassan Piker. Come on. But there's a large portion of the internet that really, really wants this. Absolutely loves it. There's a large portion of the internet that just eats up drama, of course. All right. But belittling it into this oh, just irrelevant drama. That's not what the Eliza Blue controversy has been about. Don't follow me if that's you. I don't. Just burn down the house around you, Tim. I don't know how to solve this stuff. But I'll tell you some stuff uh, uh, externally outside of all of this as to why I'm, I'm done with it. I'm completely done with it. Cancel your subscriptions at TimCast.com if this is what you want. I never wanted your money in the first place. That's not what people are wanting, Tim. It's again, once again, the belittling of the whole situation to being dishonest drama farming by 
lying, essentially saying it by equating everyone at the, you know, the same as the Young Turks. That's not what they wanted. They wanted you to stay true to the principles you said that you hold as a journalist. That's what people wanted. And they'll unsubscribe because you're betraying that. I asked for your memberships at TimCast.com because we want to open a coffee shop. We want to open a coffee shop. The construction, the contractors are there. They're planning it because we want people to be able to come to a place to share ideas, to resist what I view as the corruption of what was once a great country. Kind of similar to some things the Quartering talks about and other people. Like they talk about, you know, the corruption of the country and good values. The degradation, the, the, the psychotic woke cult. That's what I want to do. That's what Jeremy certainly talks about. But suddenly not. He's the same as the Young Turks and is doing... No what I don't care for is grifters. Oh, piss off. You're one of the biggest grifters. Oh. <laughs> Outright grifters. <laughs> and they'll accuse me of all of that stuff. Yes. Fine. That's fine. But because I'll it's true. Come off it. Tell you this right now. I'd have no problem, as I always say, hopping in my van and going down by the river and just living it and give. Then do it. Why don't you do it? Because it's not. It, it, if one was more preferable to another for you, you would do it. Okay. There's more reasons for you to try and build this thing, earn money, become successful, and trust me, you like. Like it's clear that you like it. You like the influence. You like the prominence. You like the power. You like the success, Tim. It's clear. You also like the fact that you get to fight for your principles and make a difference in the world. I think you like that. Well, that's not. Of course, there's nothing wrong with liking that, but. To try and say that, oh, you know, it's not to say that he wouldn't enjoy just having, you know, a non a life of non-controversy where he just goes and in his van to whatever. But clearly, you're doing this for a reason. Giving everything up. In fact, it'd probably be a whole lot easier. So um, I would appreciate it if people who followed Sam Cedar, the Young Turks, Hassan, and the Quartering, and the quartering. weren't following my channel. Wow. Wow. Tim deserves it, then. He deserves what he gets. He's, like, he's, in, he's wanting people, all the people, all the mil, near 1.5 billion people that are following the quarter, Jeremy, to not follow. And they have a large overlap in audience. This is such a brain-dead, stupid thing to do. But you get what you freaking deserve. Do you think there won't be another Tim Pool in the future? Do you think you're irreplaceable, Tim? Come off it. No. The movement, as people call it, don't need you. Okay, there's a lot of people who are doing the same thing and they'll be able to become successful and stuff. All right, if it's not for you, just, just do it. Go then! And stop lying and friggin' betraying your audience like this. Because I think this is the kind of low lowbrow garbage that doesn't actually solve any problems. <laughs> it's all lowbrow garbage. Stuff that you do yourself. You do it as well, Tim. And belittling the stuff. And he's he attacking Brittany Venti or, and lumping her in by name in, in this pathetically disingenuous thing. Ah, oh, this is the worst video he's ever done or that I've ever seen by far. Like, holy crap. This is, a, this is easily the type of video that would make me unsubscribe. Tim Pool attacks his fans. Literally didn't do it. Yes, you did! It's not relevant. It has nothing to do with anything. It is relevant. Absolutely it's relevant. Because you're betraying what you have set yourself up to be. Why talk about this stuff? I get it. Some people like it. No, no, no. The reason why we talk about it is because the crap, even on our side, needs to be called out. You shouldn't excuse, you know, negative bad behavior, even from the people on your side. All right? <sighs> And also, I do it as a cautionary tale to try and show other people that this is not what to do. Okay, I'm really glad Crowder called out Daily Wire so people know those type of predatory terms agreements that will become contracts if they could get away with them is dog crap and immoral. Okay, and you deserve to be called out on this so people won't attack their fans claiming they're bots and they'll stand true to their principles and actually address the important topics that they have said that they'll do, because that's who they are, as an ethical journalist, right? So that's why I'm doing it. 
It's not a farm drama. And Tim, you're showing yourself to be unworthy of the position that you have right now. Like genuinely, especially where you say, the people who subscribe to the quartering, I don't want you to follow me. All right. And the holy crap, the dishonest, belittling and false framing of what's going on, that they all just want drama. We don't want that from you. We wanted you to stay true to your principles. Okay. I'll tell you about some personal stuff in my life and why I'm so ready to be at this point. And um, the level of obsession with me that I have to deal with is it's not worth it. It's not at all. That might be true, but if it is, you can move on to do other things. There's nothing forcing you to do this, Tim. Oh, and that's why I say I empathize with Joe Rogan. Like, man, like even I talk about Joe Rogan. I did a segment about him because he's in. Hey, look, Tim probably gets more crap than me in terms of volume, but in percentage, I think it might be the same. Like there is hit pieces and, and attacks, you know, when I say percentage, percentage based on, you know, our viewership and things. Um, so percentage based on my, you know, the amount of attacks versus the amount of subscribers and viewers I have, all right, it's probably the same percentage, all right? And the reason why, because it is worth it, okay? I, if it's getting the better of him and it's too much, yeah, all right. There'll be other people who will handle it with more grace than you in the news. And I think about it like maybe I shouldn't. Maybe I just literally shouldn't talk about stuff like this. And we've done a lot of segments about Joe. As I've tried to explain, it's like, well, he's the biggest podcast in the world and we're all in this space. So when they come after him, when they criticize him, we talk about that. We either provide defense or some context. Sure. You know, what's, what's, what, what I've been dealing with over the past year is we've been swatted 15 times. We get bomb threats. We've had the studio evacuated. I haven't been swatted or bomb threat yet. So there's certainly that. I'll, I'll acknowledge that. And I don't know how I would manage it. And um, perhaps I could. Perhaps uh, Tim is handling it better than I could. Okay. And maybe I'm not giving him enough credit. I don't know. I've never experienced it. Um, yeah. So perhaps it is a more difficult thing. Did. Um, I've had people threaten my life and then, uh, you know, I have to deal with the likes of Jeremy Hambly making videos saying, you know, assassination attempt on Tim Pool, just like extreme hyperbole and stuff like that. You do that too. Extreme hyperbole. Elon Musk nukes someone from orbit. It's one of your titles, Tim. Oh, it's so awful. Now, now this is the thing. All right. Swatting. I can acknowledge, right? But now try to say, oh, people saying hyperbole and making videos about me. That I can absolutely relate to. It happens to me all the time. Flat out lies. People call you a Nazi. Just the most vile crap, all right? So? <laughs> Deal with it, okay? It's like, oh, it's so awful that you know, Jeremy's always making these videos about me hyperbole, even though I'm now being a hypocrite because I do that at the same time. Maybe not the same level, like uh, say, oh, volume, but you do it. You're not innocent here about that. Shock bait, garbage content. And I'm just like, I really don't want to be involved in this. I really don't want to be I, 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 here. Let me explain to you why. Then, Tim, there's nothing holding you to it, okay? And if people are thinking it'll be a great loss if Tim moves on, no, he deserves to be happy. If it's not making you happy, don't do it. There'll be just as many people who want that type of content, okay? And they will find someone new because there are so many people already making content, right? That Tim is more prominent. It's probably attracted their interest and being promoted their content and therefore they're watching and they have their subscribership, right? But if you're not there, they have that time to devote to another creator and another creator will rise up because there's heaps of people doing it. This is the reality. It doesn't need you. It's great that you're fighting. It's great that more people are better, all right? But... If it's not for you, it's not for you. And the movement won't die without you. And stop thinking that you're so important about this. And look, maybe I'm different because I'm going to fight the good fight. And I actually don't care if we win or lose. I care about standing for my principles throughout the journey. There's a great, there's a great phrase in one of my favorite book series, uh, Stormlight Archives by Rand Sanderson. Life before death, journey before destination. 
the philosophy behind that is actually a religious philosophy, and Brandon is of the same faith as me, and so I can certainly see where he got inspired about this, is that it doesn't matter where you end up. It matters what you did to get there. If you lie, cheat, and steal to become successful, you've failed in life. But if you stay true, honest, and principled, and end up a pauper, you have succeeded in life. And that's what I'm concerned about. I don't care about winning. I care about doing the right thing in the process and living a good life. And even if at the end of the day we have failed, I've actually still won if I have led a good life. This is why I'll do things that might harm the movement, call you out, because I'm more concerned about doing what's right and being principled than winning. Imagine you have someone show up to your house and they break in and you can't actually do anything about it. There's no calling the police. You can't. And the police can do something, but then they, they attack you. They use whatever leverage they can against you and they make up fake lies in the media to try and destroy your life. So what do you do? How do you deal with stalkers? How do you deal with harassment? How do you deal with obsessed people? How do you deal with people who used to be your friends who make up lies about you all the time? And I'm not talking about Jeremy. I don't consider this guy to have ever been my friend. He makes videos about me where he insults me and then acts like he was my friend the whole time. I was waiting where the equivalence to the analogy to what's actually happening is going on because I'm failing to see it like that. And we were friendly and cordial, but seriously, this guy would just, I mean, he sends me a veiled threat. Was, wasn't a threat. You'd have to be so defensive and on edge to consider that an actual threat. He, he posts smack talk about me. He insults me and mocks me. And then he expects me to be his friend. He didn't expect to be his friend. But also, it's interesting. I, I, you get to choose how to respond in things like that. Look, happens to me. Okay. Things that could potentially piss me off, I then need to choose how to re- respond react to it. My point of reference here is when other people respond to me about initially you know, shadowversity stuff, my content that gets viewed more, all right? And they there are subtle digs at me more often than you might realize by people who the larger audience would expect us to be friends. Uh, and sometimes things that I could easily be insulted at. You know, I there, there's been comments where people they try and say it in a in a um, a delicate way, but things that I do is being try hard, like and and stuff, and uh, uh, and other like subtle little digs uh, underneath the surface, and then I get to choose how to respond. I could be offended by it, or I could just ignore it and laugh with it, because that's the better way to do it. There are sometimes really disingenuous memes that about. Sometimes they're just funny and you just laugh with it, okay? Maybe it's the stress that's preventing him from being able to do it because I don't think what the quartering did about to, to, to Tim was nearly as malicious as Tim is framing it here. No. You could laugh with it, but I acknowledge that when you're under a lot of stress and criticism, it's a lot harder to be able to take things lightly. And perhaps that's what's actually happening is it's just too much and it's getting the better of him. No, I'm not interested in any of this. I'm not interested in being a leader to you. I'm not interested in being a leader to anybody. Good. I'm not interested in being in Congress, being in... Oh, hang on, but you are interested in being a respected journalist. Come on, you've really pushed yourself uh, uh, as someone who represents certain principles. Okay? You're interested in that. And as to leader, then I'm not so sure about either now. Um, you certainly push yourself to be in a position of prominence. That's what you've been working towards. And to be a reliable source, to be respected. Politics. I'm barely interested in running a company. That I would agree with. Because running a company sucks. It's not, uh, sorry. I don't want people to misinterpret that. Uh, I, I love the guys I work with, but just managing budgets is stressful. It's just that awesome. It's, you know, so much to it. What I, what I am is somebody who sees problems and tries to talk about them. And it's far from perfect. And it's... That's what Jeremy could easily say about himself. He, uh, look, bombastic, exaggeration, uh, hyperbole and thumbnails. But you do that as well, Tim. You, you've done it as well. Maybe not as often uh, as the quartering, but you definitely do it. Try And tries to be as honest as possible. You're not being honest here at all. Well, oh, sorry. You're not being honest in many instances. Uh, I don't like hiding information from people. 
You, you, but you do. You like, the whole, like especially personal stuff. You try to you try to keep what happens in those Tim houses as under wraps as possible. You get your employees to sign NDAs, Tim. So this is bullcrap as well. You're not completely open at up front. You had relations with Lydia while she was working there and was causing a lot of issues. It's been, uh, and it was Adam Krieg, the former employee, that uh, exp- you know talked about that. So you like I'm try you're not open about everything bull crap. I think people should just know what's going on. <laughs> it's, no you don't. And if the end result of all of this and all of the drama is that I just walk away and say I never wanted to be in this position, I'd be happier for it. Then do it and I wish you well in life. Okay? But you're not. I I so saying it that I don't know, look, I'm on, I'm trying to decide how much merit and validity this comment really has because i see him working vastly more for what he's building at timcast than that life he wants so it makes me question how sincere it really is and he repeats it so often but maybe he's it's close it's that close to doing it and if so if it makes you happy just do it and stop complaining about it all right especially because now that you're lying and you have your attacked your fans You've been spreading what sounds to be complete conspiracy bullcrap, okay? And if it's affecting you this much to perform this poorly at your job, well, maybe it is time. The challenge is and the reality is there are millions of people who do follow me and who do ask me to keep doing this. I tried quitting this job outright in, I think it was 2019. But I thought you don't do what people say. You don't care what they want you to do but now it's 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 them that you're going to take on this cross and do this horrible thing because you certainly you know you you don't like the money the success the things you've been able to build the personal skate parks you have the cool things i if you didn't care about it why do you own it and buy them just because you can i don't know you could easily give that money away cure a lot of people's blindness all right. So when you see this rich person with all these things saying, I don't care about money and I wish my life was simpler and stuff like that. 19. You can look up the video where I outright said, that's it. I'm done. Things have to change. But you d- did it. <laughs> and I got slammed with so much, so many emails, so many messages. They said, please don't stop. I- but I thought you don't bow. You, you don't pander to people. And you don't bow to what they say to you. I was like, okay, I guess I'll keep going. I had a few hundred thousand followers at the time, I think. And I was just like, I can't do this. I don't want to do this. I'll explain to you, man. I, ho- I hope you understand. Some, 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 some things you need to understand when it comes to a job like this. Every day I see the likes of AOC, Sam Cedar, the Young Turks, Jeremy Hambly, making up weird grifter garbage nonsense to try and attract new fans. Lumping them all together. Tim... Now you're doing what you're saying they're, they're doing. Lying. Does it just stir up drama, sympathy, play the victim? I don't know. And I'm just like, I don't care. I don't, I, 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 I'm hoping that we can talk about egg shortages, you know, and stuff like that. Or Such lie. Like, again, whenever he tries to deflect and say, oh, I just want to talk about egg shortages, it's so many videos that you make about internet drama stuff. Or the potential for cyber attacks, or as I often do, the prospect of civil war. I get people like Jeremy Hambly getting booked for my show, and then instead of coming on my show, he goes on hit on some other show. And this is false framing and dishonest. Okay, you're trying to say it that he purposely cancelled to go on someone else's show, meaning that he was booked to go on your show, got an offer to go on someone else's show, and cancelled your show for the purposes of that, which I don't think is the case at all. I think something fell through. So he couldn't do it. And then some people that he knew were online and he decided just he had the time and he go online. So, Tim, where's your evidence that this is the case? What? And then insults me. Then he goes on his platform and attacks me and tells all of and tells and tells everybody that I insulted them, called them bots. And it's just not. You, what? You, you say you didn't call them. But yes, you did. Oh, oh, wow. Oh, oh, I think we need to actually play play the clip in real time but the reality is most of the people spamming us they're not real people black and white 
clear as day and you you have the gall to actually sit here now and say that you didn't listen to me tells all of and tells and tells everybody that i insulted them called them bots and it's just not true <laughs> Oh, gosh. But the reality is most of the people spamming us, they're not real people. So why would I want to be involved in a world like this? I'll still keep doing what I... <sighs> The credibility ometer for Tim is being drained very quickly with that one. I do because I enjoy doing it, and that's the only reason I do it. But I'll, but I'll tell you, to have people who were once some of my best friends, this is what you get in this space. A friend of mine from when I was a teenager, I used to skate with every day, decides one day that his path towards acknowledgement is to make up lies about me because we'd been friends, and that's his claim to fame. I, I I would have trusted what he's saying once before this, but now seeing him lie blatantly, black and white to our faces, so confidently, I, I can't trust anything he says. Holy crap. I, I, you know, you claim Jeremy lied about you when you, claiming that you attacked your fans and called your fans monsters, which you objectively did, saying Jeremy's lying that you didn't do that when, when you did. Now you're saying you had this old friend that's lying about you now in the very video a few sentences after lying about someone lying about you. I, I can't believe you. I, I That happens more than you can realize. <laughs> Maybe in his mind. It seems like it's... Look, I'm not saying that there aren't people that lie about Tim like you see it blatantly on the Young Turks and stuff, but... Tim, when you claim people are lying about you and the content is accessible, we can check. We can just double check. It's right there. They come out and they say, one time Tim Pool did this thing. And they're like, well, that's Tim Pool's friend. That must prove it. And I'm like, why are you lying about me, bro? What we end up getting is rage-filled garbage. What we end up getting is drama nonsense and cancel culture. Which you contribute to. And again, belittling Jeremy and Brittany at the same level as Turks is just gross and false. I don't care, man. I really don't. <clears throat> you do. I mean, you're getting fed up with things, but you care about all this type of stuff a lot. You can hear it in your voice. So I don't believe you when you say it. The main reason I typically never talk about the drama or people like Sam Cedar or the Young Turks, the reason I don't care to talk about Jack Murphy or Eliza Blue. But... You make exceptions to Hassan Piker, of course. For those that are familiar with any of these controversies, is because it doesn't mean anything to the average person. <laughs> so it's just like, the person that qualifies that the most out of everyone they talk about it is definitely Hassan Piker for me. I do not give a stuff what he says. Why are you making videos on him, Tim? Because it's drama. And you're happy to talk about trending drama topics. It's because to you who goes to the grocery store and sees that milk is now five or six dollars a gallon. Oh, or sees that there's not even any stop this virtue signaling crap now, whereas I only talk about the important stuff. The, you know, people have, no, you don't. I've watched you well long enough. That's bull crap. Eggs on the shelf. You're not wondering about some low tier internet personality everyone's mad at right now because it's not going to help you buy groceries. <sighs> we care about some low tier internet personality being you having undue influence and power to ban people off Twitter and censor them and affect free speech because that does affect me. My ability to express my beliefs on the largest platforms, yeah, that affects me. Absolutely. This is why we would find it important and significant for people with the largest voices, people who have claimed to care about the things, to speak about it when it comes up. I have a question. I'm wondering why it is that people are so obsessed with me. Ah, uh, many of you may say it's narcissistic and egotistical. Fine. A little bit, yeah. Uh, you're not that important. They're obsessed with you at the moment because of the current controversy. Fine. Uh, no, but really, I mean, I've, I've had so many people. I've been swatted 15 times. It's because you're famous, Tim. You're famous and successful. This past year. 
since the since uh, uh, January of twenty. 20- Famous, successful, and influential. That that you know. People who disagree with you because you're influential will target you more than people who uh, say similar things but are not as influential. Some people asked, how come other people aren't getting swatted as much as you? And I'm like, I have no idea. It's just an insane obsession with me. I'm wondering why it is there aren't people coming out, uh, former employees and family members and friends of Joe Rogan and making up lies about him, but they do about me. That's an interesting one. Tim. I get the impression that uh, your interpersonal interactions are very uh, messy. Just by things that we learn about, you know, Adam Krigley, he came out and ex- shared some really concerning stuff. I, I personally think that you, you uh, like a lot of the issues with Lydia and all this crap, I think you are crap with relationships and, and everything. I, like, there's... You've had issues with your brother stealing from you, haven't you? And then you hire him again later on, or, or like I don't know all the details, but Adam Krieger certainly has shared some really interesting things. I get the impression, just from tangential things, as I mentioned, that it feels like a lot of this might be self-inflicted because uh, certainly, at least with the Lydia drama and all that. <sighs> You seem to hire a lot of friends and then get messy in a relation. And that's why people are having questions about Eliza's interactions when she was there. I, I get I get the impression that Tim has slept around a bit with uh, lots of people who's getting con that's an impression. I, I can't confirm. <sighs> but anyway, like maybe I'm completely wrong on that front, but I'm just saying like there are I think there'll be reasons why you have so many issues about that. And perhaps Joe doesn't or he doesn't talk about it. I don't know. It's so weird. I just genuinely do not understand. But it is kind of refreshing, refreshing to see the rage filled drama uh, crybabies constantly attacking me to see that. Oh, heavens me. I've lost a couple thousand subscribers on this channel. Dude, I don't want. So he there is backlash. I don't I don't I don't want any of this. I don't, I don't, I don't care for it. You don't care for the backlash or drama. Like this, car, what's going on right now, Tim, is a bit, you know, a bit of your own making. You, you, you did this, all right. I don't want you to obsess over me every day. I- <laughs> you think people obsess over you ever? Come off it, man. It's just because this is the trending and controversial topic. People don't think about you every day. You're not that important. I don't need you to like me. I'm just going to talk about what I feel like talking about. You need people to trust, respect, and want to watch your content. Otherwise, you wouldn't be successful. Why, you know, and you, that's what you're working towards. You know, look, I've, 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 I've had some nice things to say about Hassan, Hassan Piker. And I- <laughs> I don't talk about low-tier internet personalities, stupid drama, or irrelevant people whose opinions mean spit. I never do that. Never do And the same video where you say you don't do it, you start talking about Hassan Piker. Piss off! Come on! I can't believe this! I... <sighs> Whoosh. Completely oblivious to it. And I had some criticisms for him. He came out. He will say, "Bob, but is relevant? No, he's as relevant as you make him. He's such a moron." <laughs> oh my goodness! I've nothing intelligent to say, right? I. Oh well. It, what Eliza is doing is vastly more significant, even though she has less views and everything like that, than what Hassan is doing. I'm not here to pander to anybody, and uh, I'm not going to be pressured by anybody for any reason. Tim, what this sounds like is that I will never admit that I'm wrong even when I'm legitimately called out for true grievances people have against me. Okay? You've dodged the actual issues and criticisms people have had time and time again and totally disingenuously, falsely, dishonestly reframed what the criticism are to say. It's over people just wanting dra- tribal drama bullcrap. And uh, I'm not going to be pressured by anybody for any reason. And yet you still refuse to acknowledge any fault. 
not a single thing. And in this video, black and white lied to your audience. Quite literally. You can message me and say you're my biggest fan and you've been a fan for three years, but you're just so disappointed that I won't talk about low tier inconsequential e-drama. It's not, it's not low tier and it's definitely not inconsequential. I, I, I'll always call him out when he bullcraps that, okay? And that's not, and people aren't trying to, you know, say, like say you should talk about low tier inconsequential because it's not inconsequential. They're saying you should talk about because it, it is consequential. That's what they're trying to say and is not listening. He hasn't picked up on any of that. And then is belittling, saying, ah, oh, it's just people trying to shame me, so I have to pander to them. No, 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 no. You might want to actually listen. So ask yourself this, as it pertains to all of this drama. In what way would talking about Jack Murphy or Eliza Blue have bettered someone's life? Could have helped prevent people signing up to supporting true grifters con artists okay if you spoke about the eliza thing could help more spread more awareness about the issue britney might have had her account back on twitter she's been locked out for ages it's affecting her ability to promote her live streams it's affecting her fan base as well you could potentially save a lot of vulnerable people who might be getting fleeced by con artists like you know and you perhaps you might be out by bringing more awareness to it you uh, might have been out to help push back against the censorship that seems to still be present in twitter you could have done a lot of good and so saying out of the do nothing just you come off as dishonest when you say that it wouldn't bullcrap there's, there's literally nothing i could say oh piss off and what what happens when i do address it they make up lies no, 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 no. See, this is again, is playing the victim. I can't do anything at all. Everything I did would be wrong. No, no, no. If you did the right thing, people would be celebrating you for it and have not a single issue. All you had to do was the right thing, Tim. Sometimes you might like, sometimes doing the right thing is difficult because like, sometimes you do get backlash for doing the right thing. Other times it's not. <laughs> and doing the right thing here, well, I don't know what consequences might be existing behind the scenes, but perhaps pretend if there's not, it would have been easier for you to do the right thing because your fan base wouldn't be upset with you, frustrated. You wouldn't be getting this backlash. Would have been easier in that regard. Now you're lying about it. Save face to cope. They go on my chat now and they say that Tim Poole accused his fans of being robots. But, uh, Bot, bots. Accuse them of being bots. I never did that. Yes, you did! <laughs> well, not robots, but you said you did accuse them of being bots. I said a PR firm created about 50 of these bots, spams people's comment. You basically said half of your audience were all bots. But the reality is most of the people spamming us, they're not real people. To convince them to join in a mob. It's a common PR tactic. Oh, yeah, and you called them all a mob. That was a big insulting thing as well. Ask any celebrity. You take a look at certain... He's just right. Well, he's lying. Lying, gaslighting people to their face right now. Sorry. Have a nice day. Go get your, your obsessive psychodrama from other people. It's obsessive psychodrama. This really significant story with Eliza Blue and Twitter censorship. Obsessive psychodrama. Very genuous, honest framing. I don't want to be famous in this, I never did. He's going to say, what, in this, in the drama thing? I don't think he's complaining about the influence and success that he has. You can lie and claim that I did all day and night, but I'll tell you this. I will never apologize to you, mob. I don't... Calling, I didn't attack my audience. Now he's just like, I will never apologize to you, mob. I thought they're all bots. Who are you speaking to now, Tim, if they're all bots? So clearly, you know they're not bots. They're watching you because they're pissed. And now you're calling them a mob. I don't care where you come from, left or right. You'll never get an apology out of me for anything. You don't come off as strong. Here, Tim. I know you probably feel like you know you're standing and being so like tough. You come off as desperate at this moment and just lying to yourself. Screw yourselves. I don't need to be famous. I don't want to be famous. I never attack my fans. Also, screw yourselves, <laughs> mob. I didn't attack my fans. <laughs>
<laughs> you gaslighting asshole. <laughs> Listen, I don't need your support. Now, for those of you who agree with me, those of you who think that we should be changing the culture, we should be building things. We should that mob, those are people who think we should be changing the culture. Okay. They agree in a lot of these other aspects, but you outright attack them. The last thing I care about is the opinion of people who want me to engage in drama garbage. Ah, he just keeps lying about this whole thing. It's not people that want you to care about drama garbage. It's your fans who want you to hold true to the standards that you said that you hold. Okay? You support free speech, that you are against cancel culture, that you're against deplatforming, that you're honest, fair journalist, okay? And your fans are trying to hold you to that standard that you have claimed you hold. All right? But you're attacking them. Th those, those fans, fans like me, I've watched you for a long time, we're just a mob. Well, I say this because... The cancel culture is a large component of what's a, dri a, a negative driving force in our culture. People are obsessed with the fight. They're obsessed with the anger. They want someone to be angry at. You can be angry, be angry at. No, no. <sighs> I, I, I have to reflect on myself here. I fight, you know, um, and uh, I have, uh, you know, my rage moments and everything. Sometimes it's fun, but ideally be great if I didn't have to fight it at all, of course. be great if this insane, woke cancer wasn't corrupting the world and making it such a horrible place and that we would all just get along and not have society collapsing around us. Be angry at me all you want, whatever, I don't care. It gets... I, I didn't want to be angry at you, Tim. Long time fan here, okay? It's your actions that have caused it your clicks on YouTube. Congratulations. See, it's so disingenuous. They're only doing it for clicks. I've held off. I didn't want to make any videos like this, but it's this crap that's caused me to do it. But I'm just going to try and do my thing. Tonight, we're going to be meeting with several members of Congress to talk about Twitter censorship, the censorship of conservatives, something I've been right about since 2016. Censorship of conservatives, like on Twitter, like what happened to Brittany Ventney. You've been concerned about that for a lot of years. Why do you just and the state of the union and the betterment of this country. Maybe I'm not the person you want to watch. Maybe uh, maybe there's there's somebody else who's going to deliver for you better. I hope you go watch them. I really, really do. All right, there, there you have it. And this is the thing, people. There's lots of people to do that. I'm not referring to myself. I, I, uh, Night's Watch is more pop culture and everything. I don't always comment on start or make videos like this. But if you like pop culture commentary, um, uh, uh, criticism and review, Please do subscribe to Night's Watch. But there's a lot of other people who do the stuff Tim does. Heaps of them out there doing it, doing a good job too. To go watch them. Tim doesn't want you. He's burning his own house down around him. And there and there's plenty. There's plenty that do that. All right. Tim Paul isn't needed for the movement to be successful. And if he doesn't enjoy it, he maybe he'll be happy doing something else. I can only be me and only do my thing, and that's the only thing I will do. But you won't, you won't do the things that you promised you would stand up for the things you say you stand up for when there's something stopping you. We don't know exactly what. So clearly that's false. You won't do it. But truly, the last thing I will say, I hope you all can understand the, what's the right word? The obsession that people have with me is shocking to me. <laughs> <laughs> you know, like, all these people that find me so hot, it's just, it's so shocking to me, right? I'm just so hot. They just, <laughs> it's got the same energy. <laughs> and look, like, currently, pe people, you could say, perhaps, obsessed, only, it's the, it's the current controversy, and you're, wow, you've made it so much worse to... And it's not that we particularly uh, think that you're such an important person. Stop thinking that you are. All right? Gosh. Everyone's just so obsessed with me. <sighs> and um, you know this because we've had people break into the house. 
I've had people show up um, and... Bre- uh, and look, some people are. I'm not saying they aren't, but everyone, calm down. Hold up. Break in, people show up on the property, even after being told not to. We have stalkers. You know all about it. I've been involved, involved in lawsuits. And I can't, for the, for the life of me, figure out why so many people care about who I am. So you're successful and you're prominent and you have influence, Tim. It's not friggin' hard to figure out. You constantly talk about like uh, how big the Timcast has grown uh, and stuff. I mean it sincerely. Like, why <laughs> does Sam Cedar make so many videos about me, dude? I never talk about the guy. Tim, you're that stupid. You're not that stupid. Come on. There's a lot of people who have equivalent levels of influence that there's lots of reply guys to as well. My goodness. Nerd Roddick. Love Nerd Roddick. I'm on Friday Night Tides with him. Great. It's insane how many reply guys he has. Like crazy amounts. And the lies, the unbelievable lies. And they try to even, like, organize against him and other people in the circle. It's crazy. Tim thinks he's the only, you know, obsessed about person online, hated person online. He wouldn't say only, but he's thinking to this level. Does he know the level of crap other people and prominent creators get as well? Gosh. Why do the Young Turks make so many videos about me? They got more followers than I do. That's... Well, do they get as many views? Like, <laughs> Tim, come on! <laughs> you know, you're influential, you're effective, you're successful, okay? Do you have, like... I think people go after Jordan Peterson probably more than Tim. Swattings I don't know about, but maybe he keeps his um his location more hidden. Jeez. Why is it that people are so damned interested in clicking a video with my face on it? <laughs> <laughs> It's not hard to figure out. Holy crap. You know, I've told this story before. Before I went on Joe Rogan's show in, in 2019 or whatever, I'm sitting in my boxers playing World of Warcraft. What was it at the time? Was it uh, Legion? I th- if it's getting to you this much, Tim, in sincerity and for thinking of the things that's best for you, just quit and live a happy life doing what you like okay like I, I like in terms of wanting the best for tim pool and if that's the thing that does it like again i'm not that invested in winning i'm more invested in doing the right thing and as a result i don't care if tim pool is going to stick around doing his job okay even if he is effective and all that stuff it's not to say I don't want to win the culture war or push back, but I'm confident that other people will rise up, okay? There is seemingly just as many people who are willing to support conservative voices. Tim won't call it, say he's a conservative, but pushing back against the white thing, still as many people there. I don't need Tim Paul to validate their beliefs. And so if it's going to make your life better, quit and stop lying about it. Because it's clearly getting to you. But you know, I'm a crazy person, I guess. And I decided I have to work twice as hard. I have to do twice as much. I have to never stop. Why? Because you want success. You do. You, you, you work crazy hard, okay? It's your choice to do that, Tim. Why would I want to be the center of that? I never did, and I never... I, 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 and I still... And quit! Still don't. So one of the best things that could possibly happen to me is people just back off. Oh my goodness, like, the reason why I'm just saying quit, right, is that I don't think he really wants to. And I think he's just trying to play the victim, get sympathy. And that's what it comes off like. Stop tweeting about me. Stop, stop complaining about me. Stop watching 50 (laughs) drama videos with my name on it. And here we are, and I'm probably making the longest reply to this whole crap than every, anyone. And it's what you're doing now that's causing it, Tim. You're causing this, okay? These responses, this video, the IRL and uh, members thing, 
or awful. That was so bad that your responses, and it's made you look really bad because it's like it's so dishonest. You know, I don't make this video because of the drama pertaining to me right now. Admittedly, as much as they'll probably lie, they'll make more videos saying, you know, Tim goes on a rant or whatever like that because it fuels their, their psychopathy. He'll be referring to me because I'm making a video in response. It's fueling my psychopathy. Piss off. It's like everyone's a bad actor. No one could have legitimate grievance against my actions because I'm so in it. No, you're not. And you've been lying through your teeth. I keep expanding what we do at TimCast. We've got a new morning show that's going to uh, uh, be comparable to The View. You know, we'll get some moms and some women of moderate um, uh, politics to talk about real world issues, but like not like insane people like The View is. I hope it'll be successful. Best of luck to him. I'm not confident it will be because Tim has a bit of trouble at um, uh, making things truly successful that don't involve him in it. We're going to keep doing it. We're going to redouble our efforts. And I'm hoping that in... Yeah, Tim doesn't seem to support too much. I've certainly seen more support from other people like Jeremy in supporting the creator community. Other YouTubers promoting their projects that they're doing. Um, and Tim only really allows people to kind of promote stuff if they're on the channel. And I've always gotten the impression that unless they're like big like the Daily Wire, Tim is less reluctant to try and promote other people who are making culture than necessary and only focusing on the type of stuff that he wants to make, you know, the songs he's making, the skits he's making. And I'm not sure he is as equipped to make cultural kind of entertainment as he thinks he is. I could be wrong. It's the impression I get. I just see a lot of great creators around there and people might think you're referring to me because, you know, uh, many others who could do with a lot more promotion and tension. And I see other people promote these. I, I, there was a guy who was um, on Tim's channel promoting John De La Rosa, um, you know, and the books and comic books that he's mentioned. And Tim just kind of brushes over it. I don't, I don't see a lot of him promoting the creator community and other people creating culture unless it, he gets something back in return. Like, you know, he scratches Daily Weisberg, they scratch him. And uh, I've always just, it seemed like there was almost a measure of reluctance. Did I just miss all the times he did? Perhaps. But I see a budding and struggling creator, you know, anti-woke creators trying to make new culture <clears throat> who need all the support they can get. <sighs> and so Tim, instead of support, he just wants to make his own stuff, it seems like. Take your money and leave. I don't want it. I don't need it. I don't want to be rich. I don't want to be famous. I don't need it. You can leave. Then why don't you quit? This is why I feel it's disingenuous, okay? And you're clearly upset about this, Tim. You're you, you, this is one of the most emotional, you know, bitter... You've acted more bitter here than I've ever seen before, okay? Clearly does bother you. And so I feel it's bullcrap. I feel it's just posturing. He's just desperate to, you know, like, look, and look, prove me wrong, Tim. Just quit then. Do your own thing. Be happy. It's, if it's not making you happy, you know, but he, I don't think he will. I think he's going to keep going because it does bother him. Okay. And doesn't he think they're all bots anyway? I'm not going to lie to anybody. I'm not. <laughs> <laughs> You've done some howlers. Holy crap. Not going I'm not going to tell someone please please don't leave I desperately desperately need your money oh I'm so sorry let me apologize to a mob that's now you just sound like an asshole now you just sound condescending and elitist I don't need you I've got all I've got all this other I don't need you piss off who needs you cut oh, you look real bad in this video wow mad at me I don't care I care about what I think is important Clearly not. Do you care about free speech? Do you care about censorship? Because if you did, you'd be covering the lies of Blue story, but you didn't. So I don't believe you that you cover the things that you claim to care about. It's clearly things that will prevent you. What are those things? Don't know. It's not that it's ego drama irrelevant bullcrap, because it's not. There's something else that's been stopping you that you're not being honest about. I'll do what I have to do to try and reverse that. But that does not include pandering to people who won't shut up and won't stop complaining. Y'all can leave. <laughs> he hates it. Wow. Wow, he is so angry and bitter about his audience trying to hold him to account to do what he says they will do. Stand up to the principles he says. 
So you're complaining. Maybe that means we don't win. Dude, pandering to people who won't oh, shut up just, and won't. You just won't shut up. Holy crap. Stop complaining. Y'all can leave. <laughs> maybe, maybe that means we don't win. I don't know. Whatever. It is what it is. That is exactly what I think is plaguing everything. People being mean to me feels like that's what's wrong with everything. This isn't legitimate criticism. It's just drama, toxic drama that you just want all this crap. That's what's the big problem. It's not that I've been lying and gaslighting my audience and not standing true to the things that I promised that I would stand true to, that I built my whole platform and credibility on. This obsession, this fear that when 50 people send you a message, you must bend your knee. That's cancel culture. <laughs> So any type of criticism is cancel culture. When people have legitimate grievances about your own faults, your own dishonesty, that's cancel culture. Gee, you are so pathetically acting the victim here. Grow up. And that's all the current stuff. Uh, wow. Oh, that's a dumpster fire. That is some of the worst reaction and responses I've seen. And it made him look really bad because... He's just flat out lied in a lot of instances there. Lost massive amounts of respect for him in regards to all this. And it's just left wondering as to why. Trying to make a good faith interpretation that there's no kind of conspiracy relationship behind the scene, protection going on and stuff. Is it because he just was afraid that acknowledging it would draw attention to the fact that Eliza had been on his channel and that if Eliza really is a bad actor, which it seems like she is, but we get to, well, there's a lot of stuff, right? That he was afraid of any potential flack that he might have gotten from platforming her twice. And so he first just decided to try and ignore it, which got people upset, but he ignored it further, hoping it would just go away, but then blew out of control to the point where suddenly... He had gone and he dug too deep and he just was afraid of admitting fault. And it really seems like, if anything, that's one of the core massive like errors that is made where he's been so desperate to not acknowledge fault on his behalf again and again. Now to the point of just flat out lying. I didn't attack my audience. I didn't, you know, call them robots when he called them bots. Um, just flat out lying. And it almost feels like it's just desperation in trying to mitigate any potential when i say drama like, like actual you know controversy that could affect things and it blew out of control and he didn't know how to handle it he wouldn't accept fault and he just made it worse and worse and worse that would be my good faith kind of interpretation of perhaps why he didn't want to try and cover it uh, cover the story and as a result, his audience feeling very betrayed and him just saying some of the dumbest things. According to him, if you're interested in this Eliza Blue story, he does not want you as a member. He wants you to watch someone else. And unfortunately, Tim, when you say stuff like that, people have a tendency to listen.